One Seagrams, <laughs> two Seagrams, three Seagrams to get PJ fucked up. Nah, I might be like six. I'd seven, be like, oh, just keep going. It'd be like time passes like like two hours later. It'd be like 102, <laughs> 103 Seagrams, 104 <laughs> Seagrams. Still going, huh? Hmm? Like two days later, one thousand eight hundred ninety-five. <laughs> yep, I feel it, guys. Oh, Finally, it's two thousand zeros. Oh, I'm gonna do that. I need like thirty. How much are these? I think they were how much? Oh, she sleep. She went back to sleep. I think it was like a dollar fifty seventy five cents. I'm like, it was something cheap. And she bought like I like eight six to eight of them. Uh, I something. Like I might do that. I'm gonna try eight. <laughs> Just be like, just they had the whole display where like a bin full of them. You just be like, I want the whole bin. <laughs> Why do you need so many circles? That's how many it takes. <laughs> I like your shit, okay? I like this shit. I want all of it. Yo, give me that one. How many you think I said that one? I ain't said how many. I said just give me that one. <laughs> you can't need a phone. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh, the mic is hot, too. We've been recording this whole time. <laughs> oh, hello. Just, um, drinking some Kool-Aid here. Yeah, some Seagram's Kool-Aid. <laughs> Bahama Mama. Yes. What's, what's the alcohol percentage on that, if they didn't see 3.2%. So that's baby. That's like Similac, right? <laughs> yes. Everything a grown boy needs. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, PJ. A theme music. Let's go. Video What's going on, everybody? I'm Brent. And I'm PJ. And this is The Home. The video. The hustle. Hustle? Motherfucking hustle. The hood hustle. Yes. It continues. Yes, it does. State property. Paid in full. Mm-hmm. See, we, we doing a hood movie, but it's not like state property and paid in full were kind of like done by the people in the movie, like the rappers and shit. Yes. We're watching a movie, actual like movie movie. That was Cinematography. Released in theaters made by a movie director mm. or not a rapper whatever <laughs> whatever you know what i mean yes like real shit now pj yes what are we talking about this week the king of new york that's right yes 1990 yes hour 46 minutes rated r hmm. pj you want to guess the imdb score out of 10 nine no lower. fuck what do they give nines and tens to? I can find out for you. You, like know, you know what it's going to be. It's going to be a bunch of shit you don't like. I can tell you for a fact. The Lord of the fucking Rings. And Star Wars and shit like oh, that. Oh, my gosh. But no. Seven. Yeah, exactly. Ding, 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 yes, ding, ding, okay. ding, 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 okay. yeah. Think like an IMDB. Is I'm going to look up like the IMDB top 250 or something. Yeah. I'm going to tell you like every movie's like Star Wars, Star Wars, Avatar, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Avatar. I like the Avatar. Yeah. The blue one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that one. That was deep. Was it now? Mm -hmm. Well, they're supposed to be making more of them for you. Mm hmm? Yeah. Like with Zoe again? I guess. I don't fucking know. I don't watch that shit. Uh, The top rated movie on IMDb has a 9.2, so that's the highest rated. Wow. There's no 10s. There's 9.2, though. Okay. Guess what that movie is? Star Wars. No. Lord of the Rings. No. None of that type of shit. It's an actual, like, movie. Movie? Yeah. The first three are, like, movie movies. Number four is a comic book movie, so. Mm hmm. The, the first know. three are based off of novels. The first one's based off a novel by Stephen King, number one. There's a lot of those. The Shawshank Redemption. That's number one? The top-rated movie on IMDb, 9.2 out of 10. I mean, I can't be mad, I, but I, I do can. Like that movie, yeah, though. yeah. The Godfather is number two. The Godfather Part Two is number three. Okay. The Dark Knight, Batman, number four. Mm. Number five is 12 Angry Men. 12, from 1957. That's the movie where... It's like there's a court case going on, and there's all the jurors are like, "Yo, they're ready to give a guilty verdict." But there's one guy that's like, "No, 
it's I, I need think we need to think about this more. That's what everybody got it from. Yeah, that's where it came from. Yeah. Wow. That's where that the whole movie is them like fighting with each other, and they finally realize they find the evidence. It's like, oh, he's he's not guilty. I wonder how that movie probably sucks. I, I remember liking that movie. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. I have to a watch whole it bunch again. of angry niggas in the courtroom. Yeah, and it was not even in a courtroom. It's like in a little room, just a room. Literally. In the courtroom. Yeah, they're going into the room to deliberate. And that's where the whole movie takes place, pretty much. Wow. That's an 8.9 out of 10. Wow. Number six, Schindler's List. Nah. Ha. Yeah. yeah. Number seven, The Lord of the Rings, the first one. Of course. No, no, that's not the first one. The Return of the King, I think, is the third one. So that's the third Lord of the Rings movie. Number eight, though, Pulp Fiction, 8.9. There you go. Number nine, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Western. 1966, 8.8 out of 10. Mm. Number 10, Fight Club. Ah. 8.8. Okay, okay. Number 11 is The First Lord of the Rings. Mm. Number 12 is Forrest Gump. Mm. 13 mm-hmm. is The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars. Of course. Number 14 is Inception. Okay. okay. 15, The Second Lord of the Rings movie. So all three of the Lord of the Rings movies are in the top 20. Of course they are. 16 is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Jack Nicholson, I like that movie. I oh, like. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, he's in the nut house and shit. Okay. Uh, number 17 is Goodfellas mm-hmm. 18 is The Matrix the first one 19 is The Avengers Infinity War the one that came out a few months ago that made it up there eh? number 19 wow number 20 Seven Samurai Akira Kurosawa movie I fucking ah. love, I love that movie okay. I have it upstairs okay I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just do the top 30 for you okay 21 City of God from 2002 that's something I've been meaning to see forever I've never seen it before a City of God yeah I, Mayans I don't know, I'm gonna show you a picture Two boys growing up in a violent neighborhood of Rio de Janeiro take different paths. One becomes a photographer. Oh, I've seen them. that shit. Yeah, I've never seen it. Yes. That might have to come up on the show. I've never seen that's it. That's not the Mayans. That's, yeah, they're in, yeah, Brazil. Yes. That's a gangster nigga right there. Mm-hmm. That could have went to Yeah, the okay. 22 is the original Star Wars. Mm. 23 is 7, Morgan Freeman. Mm. Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. 24 is Silence of the Lambs. Mm. 25 is It's a Wonderful Fucking Life. Wow. 26 is Life is Beautiful. I have no idea what that is. Life is Beautiful. I have no... I don't even know who the fuck mm. these people are in this movie. 27 is The Usual Suspects. I love that movie. 28 is Spirited Away, the little anime movie. Yeah. Saving Private Ryan is number 29. And number 30 is Leon the Professional. Another movie I've never seen before, but people never have seen. told me I need to see. Mm. So, that was the top future. 30. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely future okay. when I get hold of it. But we talk about King of New York. It got a 7 out of 10 on IMDb. And do you want to guess? I don't have a number of how much it costs, but I got the number of how much it made. How much this make? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how much million. it costs. Way lower. Damn. 10? Way lower. 5? Way lower. 3? Lower. 1. 2.5. Oh, my God. Made no money. Damn. But I'm sure it had to cost more than that, though. I think this was a bizarre. Why? I'm going to look it up and see. Let me see reception. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I just saw something that's going to blow your mind. All right, but reception. During the film's premiere at the New York Film Festival, many members of the audience, including the director's wife, walked out to the theater. Mm. At the Q&A session afterwards, uh, the first question that was asked was, and I quote, this film is an abomination. Why aren't you giving the proceeds to some drug rehab program? End quote. At a second showing of the film the next day, Lawrence Fishburne and Nicholas St. John were booed off stage. Nicholas St. John, the other... Nigga was St. John. Who was that? Let's find out. I actually don't know who that is. But <coughs> him, him and Lawrence, though, him and Larry was booed off stage. Damn, Larry. And Larry Frischbrand is the best part of this fucking movie. Mm-hmm. By far. That's my dude. Damn. Fuck those people booing. Oh, he's the, oh, he's the dude that wrote it. Oh, damn. He's the screenwriter, so him and... Yeah, damn. Larry and the writer got booed off stage. That sucks. They do, because that's some bullshit. Mark Caro, writing for the Chicago Tribune, gave the film a half star. Not even a whole star, he gave it a half star. He called King of New York a film more interested in leaving impressions than spinning a smooth narrative, adding that the star Christopher Walken in the movie remained just out of grasp. But, out of 24 reviews, this film holds a 71% rating on Rotten Tomatoes out of 100. So There you go. Okay. Yeah. It's probably one of those things where at the time everybody booted, but not, and when you look back on it, people like realize oh, it's that not. Was the shit. It's the shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it didn't make a whole lot of money at the time. It wasn't looked at very well at the time. Damn. Directed by Abel Ferreira. We will get familiar with him because we got other movies of his we need to do. Okay. He got one movie called The Driller Killer. We need to watch that. The Driller Killer. That's exactly what it sounds like. Okay. Power Drill Murder. No, okay. And then he has one. I have it upstairs. It's called Bad Lieutenant. Harvey Keitel. 
that fucking movie, man. We <laughs> a bad lieutenant. Like, remember the scene in this movie where the dude was just scooping cocaine up his nose? That's yes. a whole movie of that. Like that character is the main character. Yes, <laughs> we need to see that. We need to watch that one day. That could actually fall into the hood hustle category. I think. Can it? I think it could. So we, uh, we, it might, we might. Shit. Because we need to watch that. They're, they're even made. I don't know if it's technically a sequel, but there's a movie called Bad Lieutenant Port of Call, New Orleans. And it has your favorite actor, Nicolas Cage, in it oh. as the Bad Lieutenant. Oh. And I remember that movie being whack. I'll have it upstairs. I ain't watched it. I've only watched it once. But the, I remember there being a scene in that movie, though, where he's high and he shoots a dude. And in his high mind, he sees the dude break dancing and shit. <laughs> So he's like, he's like, because every time he shoots him, he starts break dancing. He, so he was telling dude, he's like, shoot him again, shoot him again. He shoots him, he does a different fucking break dance and shit. That's the best part of the whole movie. Uh, he, and they just cut back to him, he's just pulling like, <laughs> <laughs> coked out his fucking mind. Yeah, he's done. And Damn. I think Exhibit was in that movie too. I think Exhibit, wow. I, Exhibit, I might have been the one getting shot or the one that was doing the shooting. I can't remember. Wow. But yeah, so okay. there's even a sequel slightly to that one. Okay. So we're going to just go ahead and get into this one because I can't fucking wait to talk about this. This has been a long time coming on Home Video Hustle. I've been wanting to talk about this movie forever. I'm surprised I've never seen this movie. I'm surprised too. I fucking, I have a long, I actually have a history with this movie, no joke. Hmm. I remember vividly the fucking VHS box art. There's a scene, I don't know if you remember, it's like I think in the beginning of the movie he's like looking outside and like the New York skyline is like reflecting in his face. That's mm-hmm. the box art for the DVD, or the VHS cover. Mm. My uncle had it on tape. <laughs> and I, one day, I think I was sitting over the house with my, with my cousin Andrew, and he was watching it. And I just caught a glimpse of it. And I just remember seeing people get shot a lot. And I kind of caught my attention. Then he told me I had to leave the room because, you know, it was a whatever. Mm-hmm. So then he cut years later. My mom and them got HBO Cinemax. And, of course, when they ain't around, I can watch whatever the hell I want. Ain't yes. no parental controls on this fucking TV. They don't know how to do that shit. And yes. I'm not telling them. <laughs> So it was on like Cinemax, and I watched King of New York, and it was one of those things where you just like bug out, like, oh my God, I love this. <laughs> this like, I remember violence. The, like the first time I saw Reservoir Dogs, I remember that vividly too. And it was like that with King of New York, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is the shit, bro. <laughs> Fucking Lawrence Fishburne going crazy on here. All right. And then I remember I was walking around Target with my grandmother, and I was looking at the DVDs, and I seen King of New York on DVD special edition. I was like, oh, I need this. <laughs> Can you give me this? And she said, sure. And I got it. I took it home. I literally watched it twice in that same weekend. Watched all the special oh features on the DVD and everything. Read the book inside the case. I, was, I fucking was loving this movie. And so, like I said, I don't know how I'm knowing you all these years. And this is just the first. This, yeah. this is not the first time I've said that. Though. There's a couple movies that's like that. Where I'm like, I don't know how the fuck you got away from watching these all these mm-hmm. years. Damn. Well, guess what? That shit changes today. We watched it. You going to tell them about it, PJ. Yes. How does this shit open? Do you remember? Somebody gets smoked. Nope. Before that, though, Frank White gets let out of jail. Ah. Because remember, the, it's the whole opening almost is silent. It's like no, yeah, no yeah. words spoken for almost like the first five minutes, yeah. 10 minutes or so. With the, in the booth, right? And am I tripping? That's not the beginning? He was sitting in the cell, and they came and pulled him out, walked him out, and he was getting everything going, went to his car. And then you cut, after he's out of jail, you cut to the dude walking around with, that's like, I had to be like a big drug dealer somewhere where he just got holes around. He's like walking by just grabbing him on the ass and shit. Yes. And he, I think he has to go make a phone call so he goes outside to the, uh, the pay phone. Telephone the, booth. The phone booth, yeah. And when he gets in there, you see like, I think they slide something in there to lock it so he can't get out. Mm-hmm. You see like four or five dudes surround him and they like this motherfucker. Every side. Yes. <laughs> All bad. Yes. Then your boy, I think it was bugging out, did that shit. He held a newspaper in his face and said, basically, like, Frank White's out, yes. biatch. <laughs> but silently. Mm-hmm. And then, then the credits come on. Like, the credits hadn't even started yet. Like, yeah, you got to see somebody uh, get chopped up before the credits even came on. Yeah. And I don't mean, like, just, like, pap, pap. I mean, bruh, bruh, like, you got, you dead. In the phone booth. Yes. Leaking. Yes. And Brent is happy. Brent is all smiles at this point. <laughs> yes. This is the shit I'm talking. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> You don't make Brent happy. This is how you start a movie. You just murk somebody. Hey, the Avengers Infinity War has started one of them motherfucking comic book dudes getting lit the fuck up in a phone booth. That would have been a 10 plus movie. Damn. <laughs> Hawkeye. Where's Hawkeye at? Oh, there was a scene that we edited out where he got lit the fuck up. <laughs> Thanos, Thanos rolled up with the chopper. I thought you used the Infinity Go. I got the Infinity Uzi. Biatch. <laughs> Thanos is the bad guy in that movie. Ah. Uh, yeah, I've heard nah, you know the Okay. Up. Yes. <laughs> We're here. The big dude with the glove and yeah, shit. Yeah, okay. Memes and all that. Yes. Yeah. Big purple nigga. And the stones. Yeah, that's the whole point of the movie. He trying to get the stones. 
The whole point of Infinity War was he wanted to get the stones because he's talking about, you know, Earth is basically overpopulated. There ain't enough resources for all these people. So I'm going to get the stones, snap my fingers, and half y'all going to be gone. Oh. And that's pretty much. You want a spoiler for that movie? Yes. That's how it ends. He he wins at the end. Oh. Yeah, the end of, the end of that movie, he finally gets power. He snaps his fingers. You really you really don't give a fuck. Yeah, no. Okay. no. I, was, I didn't think you did. <laughs> Spoilers for Infinity War. Oops, I should have said that beforehand. <laughs> By now, y'all motherfuckers. So it's number 19 on IMDb. Y'all motherfuckers know what I'm talking about. But no, um, he snapped his fingers. And then um, it just cuts away, I think. And you see, like, all the other superheroes are like, I think the first one to go is the Winter Soldier dude. He's like, yo, what's going on? And they, instead of, like, dying or disappearing, they all turn into dust and blow away. So you start seeing all these people turn to dust and blow away. It, 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 and you don't know who's going to die? No, it's just, it just showing everybody. And you just like, they might be talking and they just disappear. They starting to dust. And it's like, oh, this shit. Damn. But the one that got me, though, I was like, oh, man, they got Black Panther gone. They killed him. What? Yeah. So that he's not in the Avengers at all anymore? Until they, unless they bring him back in the next movie. Believe me, they're going to bring him back. I already know that shit. That's the thing. Everybody's like, oh my God, I can't believe they do that. I'm like, there's a part two. You know they come back because they're going to beat the boys and bring them all back to life. That's why I didn't care that much. Oh, But they wow. tried to trick you because they had the one chick. I can't remember her name. The one uh, boy had a chick, like the main warrior girl. Mm-hmm. They made it look like it was going to be her. And mm-hmm. then when he reached out to grab her, you thought she was going to disappear. And then he did. It was like, oh shit. Damn. But the one that got everybody, though, was Spider Man gone. Oh, Spider Man died. Cause um, it was him and him and Iron Man. Like he, it was just them two left. And Peter Parker was sitting there. He's like, "Oh, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good." And he like lays down and starts looking all sick. And he's he he does he like everybody else does it real fast. They just blow it. He's like real slow. So you gotta watch Spider Man slowly turn <laughs> to dust piece by piece while Iron Man's Great. holding him and shit. He's like, "You'll be alright, kid. You'll be alright." And then he starts going, "I don't feel so good." And his face starts blowing away and shit. And then he Damn. just disappears. And Iron Man just there by himself. He the only one that survived out because everybody's like in different groups. So I, Iron Man, Iron Man's the only, only one, one left. That, oh, oh, oh! Because it was Iron Man, the Guardians of the Galaxy, like Star Lord and them, mm-hmm. uh, Spider Man, and Doctor Strange. He disappeared too. Doctor Strange, he gone too. Damn, they killed off a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people. It's mainly just the main Avengers are the only ones left. Like Captain America's left, Iron Man's left, Black Widow, the Hulk. Wow. And like then Thor, I think that that's it. <laughs> wow. They all they marked off like two thirds of the motherfuckers. That's they shit. even got fucking uh Samuel Jackson even gone. They got him at the that was the post credit scene was him getting disappeared. <sighs> Damn. It was, it was funny though because he seen he seen himself disappearing and he was like, motherfucker but before he could get the rest of it out, he disappeared. So I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> and then I think that's when he just cut the black out there. Damn. But yeah, that's how that movie ended. Everybody got fucked up. And I was like, This shit, kill them, kill them all. <laughs> 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 I like most of these motherfuckers. Good shit. Like, yep. Okay. I don't even remember how I got on that subject. How did I start talking about that movie? Mm. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Thanos with an Uzi. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Getting this Michael Jackson on. <laughs> Do you remember the time that I chopped you up? Damn. <laughs> the time. He first met. Girl. <laughs> That's my shit. Oh man, what was we talking? We talking about King of New York one day. Uh yes, King of New York. He got chopped up. Yeah, yeah dude, I got lit the fuck up in the phone. Yeah, booth then and there then was the credits. long credits. With the school ED plan. Yeah. And then are we introduced to Larry here? Nope. No? Because I would have credits you. It's him. Well, I mean, yeah, after this, because it's him riding around. You see the hood and everything. Mm-hmm. The credits going on school ED plan. Mm-hmm. Oh, you do meet. Well, they don't meet each other. I, I, I was confused. I thought you were talking about Frank White and Larry. Meet. Oh, no, 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 you, no. We meet Larry. Yeah, yeah, we meet Larry. Because yeah. it cuts to a drug deal going on. Mm-hmm. And Steve Buscemi, Mr. Pink from Reservoir Dogs, is in there testing out some cocaine. And Lawrence Fishburne is like like super dope boy. And he's in there just fucking with the drug dealer. <laughs> I kind of find out. Because he, cause he's basically just pissing off the drug dealer. Because he's like, you know... Oh, the shit's clean. And Lawrence Fishburne was like, well, I don't think it's clean. I think we need to keep checking it again. Just fucking with dude. Makes his homeboy go get him a Coke and all kind of shit. So finally, dude tells him like, yo, you get this and I need 10%. He's like, 10%? We ain't agree on that. And he's basically like, you get this or nothing. You take it or leave it. So Lawrence Fishburne's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll take it. Only for you. It's yeah. Only because I like yeah. you. Yeah. And so he hands dude this briefcase. And right before he opens it, your boy Lawrence Fishburne slams it down. He's like, yo, where my soda at? <laughs> And they start laughing. Your boy yells for the man to bring him his soda. He opens. This is one of my favorite movie scenes. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. This is AFI Top 100 Movie Moments. He opens up the briefcase. And it's a bunch of tampons in there. 
and your boy Lawrence Fishburne sits down and the drug dealer looks up at him and was like, yo, what the fuck is this? Lawrence Fishburne looks up at him and he's like, thank for the bullet holes, puta. Two shootouts. You got one right before the credits and one right after the credits. This fucking movie knows me. It knows what I want. Taylor made. And the line, too. I was like, I fucking, that's one of my favorite movie lines. AFI, Top 100 movie quotes. They for the bullet holes, puta. You fucking love this movie. Damn. But a whole shootout happens. Maybe Lawrence Fishburne and his people, they mark all dudes, people, jack their money, and they head out. Next scene comes up, see Frank White chilling in this super plush hotel, taking a shower. Mm-hmm. PJ had me burst out laughing. This scene where your boy's in the shower, like, you know, washing his hair. He just, like, looks toward the camera. <laughs> and PJ just looked at him and said, oh, hello there. <laughs> I fucking lost one. I was dying. <laughs> that is how he looked, too. It reminded me. Christopher Walken used to be on Saturday Night Live all the time. And he played a character called the Continental. And he's supposed to be like some old fake pimp or something, which I holler at ladies. But it was always from a girl's perspective. So it was like first person. So it was always him looking mm. toward the camera talking. Mm-hmm. And he used to like have the little fake mustache. Shit. That's what it reminded me of. That's the first thing that came off on was that Saturday Night Live skit. Yes. Yeah, so that's why we said that I cracked it. <laughs> yeah. But this is the point where him and Lawrence Fishburne meet up. Or Larry Fishburne. Larry, meet yeah. Up. Because uh, oh, I didn't say who this movie was starring. Did I just said the director? This movie starring Christopher Walken, uh, Larry Fishburne, David Caruso, Wesley Snipes, Victor Argo, some other people. A lot of people that you recognize, you'll see them be like, "Oh, I know that person." Yes, from Especially where? If yes. You watch a lot of like Spike Lee movies or like yes. black early '90s movies in general. You know a you lot know of these people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so amazing that you know they kept the same faces throughout the movies. Mm-hmm. I just come get this money. That's like a nice. Big, big family unit. Yeah. You know, a lot of directors do that anyway where they use the same actors. Like Kevin Smith and Spike Lee are the first two I think of that do that shit all the time. Kevin Smith. Jay and Silent Bob. Oh, gotcha. okay. There's a lot of other directors do it. Them is the two I always think of, though. The main ones. Yeah, there's always the same. If you watch the movies, you see the same people pop up over and over again. There's some, a lot of times be different characters. Mm. Hell, I think if fucking Jay and Silent Bob strike back, Fucking, I think Jason Lee and Ben Affleck like, pop up as two different characters in the same movie. <laughs> like, really? I think so. Damn. <laughs> he pop, I think Ben Affleck like, pops up as himself at one point, I think. And then he's playing a character from another movie he did, like Chasing Amy. Damn. <laughs> That's hot. But yeah, it's Larry, Larry Fishburne. Oh, and uh, I don't, I think Larry Fishburne's name was like Jimmy. Was that his name, Jimmy? I have no idea. I just kept calling him Larry in my notes. We just gonna call him Larry. Okay. Cancer. <laughs> And my name is Larry. <laughs> you know what I'm no. Float on, float on. That song. No. That part always makes me laugh. Hold on. That part always makes me laugh because it's like they come out, they say like their little sign and they be like, and my name is whatever. It's like Leo. <laughs> and my name is Paul. Or oh. some shit. <laughs> like, so, so, hold on. I got to play it. Now it's a group called The Floaters. It's a song called Float On. I've probably heard this. Y'all, you bitch. believe me. You've heard it. What? Doom. 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 I don't have a lot of time to say if you switch to Liberty Mutual. Get the fuck off my phone with these advertisements. Oh, that's them on stage, too. You get to see them on stage doing it. That's old school. You know that, don't you? Look at the moves. Look at the moves. Aquarius. Yeah. And my name is Ray. Yeah. Now I like a woman who loves her freedom. Take my hand, girl. Oh, with me, baby. Come on. That's my shit. Take my hand. Oh. Come with me, baby. Look at this shit. That temptation <laughs> shit. They don't do that no more, son. Shit. Bad news. I want you to. Float on, float on. You ain't never heard this? No. Oh, this is my shit. This is the short version. The real version, like 10 minutes long. Damn. Hold on. Now I like a woman. Oh, shit. Who, which one was that? Libra. Libra. And my name is Charles. There you go. All right, Charles. My name is Charles. <laughs> oh, look, where my nigga Larry at? Larry last. <laughs> oh, I forgot your man had the, had the high pitch, though. Where you at? Love it, man. Look at your boy. <laughs> that ain't Larry, is it? Leo. No, Leo. There Leo. you go. Now my name is Paul. Paul. And my name is Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And my name is PJ. <laughs> and my name is Larry. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. I right, need to go back. There you go. That's my boy. My name is Larry. <laughs> there you go. Cancer. Ooh. And, and my, my name, name is Larry. Larry. <laughs> Everything and everybody. Mm. Yeah. Now nah, I don't know about that one though. You know what, yeah. Everybody, don't be a hoe now. If you <laughs> think that this is you, then this is what I want you to do. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Man. <laughs> this is my. I can't believe you've never heard this before. No. I can't believe that. Yeah, that's the floaters. I can't believe never heard that before. That, that video, the fucking moves, that was the smoothest. It's like girls just throwing pussy Shit. on the stage. <laughs> it's pussy, it's pussy, 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 pussy. Might be some dicks up there. Who knows? Everybody just throwing everything. Up there. Like, it's too smooth. Damn. <laughs> oh, Shit. That's oh, great. Man. The floaters. Float on. Mm. Float. Only bad thing is that I'm forever ruined because of the Willie D version. The Willie D remixed that song called it Throat. Oh. Say, girl, I want you to throw it on. Throw it on. <laughs> throw. That's my shit. <laughs> That's hot. See, I like I like a girl that good. Sucking that. Chill a little bit. If you fit this description, baby, that's what I want you to do. Mm. Take my manhood. <laughs> deep throw it, baby. Ooh. Like a woman should. Damn, damn. <laughs> Why don't you show me how sweet it can be? Taking all of me, mm. I want you to throat, throat, throat on. Throat on. <laughs> throat that's a real song. Look at Willie D. Throat. Damn. That is my shit. I hear that version way more. So that's the version. Damn. When I hear the regular version, that's the, all I think is the Willie D. When it fucks me up. But I love that shit. Man. Oh, I gotta let them music tangents, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. The brief intermission. It's thirty minutes in. We just at the after the credits. Wow. I love it. <laughs> How we do. <laughs> You'll get the movie You'll eventually. Get it. Yeah, you know you are more than that. Right. Hey. <laughs> but Lawrence Fishburne and he walks up on a uh, oh Frank White is Christopher Walken character name mm-hmm. Frank White I do know because the rappers reference it a lot. Yes, they do. So at first you think they got beef because your boy walk out. Frank White kind of look at them and they just staring each other down. He's like, I see you out. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I see you doing art for yourself, something like that. And they just kind of stare at each other. And then Christopher Walken does like this little s- swivel dance yeah, or something. They all I mean, go like, dance oh. moves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Christopher Walken's a legit dancer. That's why he dances in a bunch of movies. He can, he can dance. He's professional oh. at that shit. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm so serious. He's a professional dancer. Oh. <laughs> he dances in almost every fucking movie. Wow. At some point, even if it's just like a little swivel. Like, he <laughs> dances. He shimmy. dances multiple times in this movie. Yeah. A lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> Wow. So, yeah, you find out they all cool because he does that. They all do it with him, and then they all run up like, ah, yeah, 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 mm-hmm. what's good, what's good? Mm-hmm. And they tell, they show your boy, they like, yo, uh, we got some. I think dude's name was King Tito, the dude that yeah. they marked with the tampons or whatever. He says, we got all of his money, and your boy, Chris Falken, just goes like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What else happens in that scene? Uh, There's something, there something else we laughed at? Oh, yeah, yeah, because your boy, he opens up with the suitcase, and he just he sees him, and he just goes, ah! Yeah. He's just like, little, little moment. Yes. Oh! And then they tell him about something about, you ain't got to worry about King, Ke- King Tito no more because he take a permanent vacation to the ground or something like that. Mm-hmm. He said, your boy, this is another one of my favorite quotes in this movie. Christopher Walken goes, you know, I must have been jail- in jail too long because uh, I have no remorse. <laughs> my feelings are dead. And then he just starts laughing like, fuck. And we to give no fucks about that nigga being dead. And then but, before they break camp. Yeah, they just chop it up a little bit. And he tells yeah. him, like, yeah, I got to go meet up with these people. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yo, you want to come with me, Larry? And he's like, man, I ain't meeting up with them stiffs. I'll holler at you afterwards. Mm-hmm. So he cuts to this real you know, fancy schmancy hotel. He's meeting up with these, like, I don't know, like politicians and shit. His mm-hmm. lawyer and all that. And they're talking business. I think they're asking him, like, you know, why not that you out of jail? What you going to do next? He's like, I want to run for mayor. And they kind of look at him funny, and then they all start laughing. And I, your boy's serious. He's like, I ain't yeah, fucking around yeah, with y'all. Like, dead real, serious. Real dead ass. And he got his little lawyer chick there with him, and he's flirting with her super hard in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. And he basically tells her out loud, I think they heard her. He's like, I want to take you on the subway. Yes. And basically, I want to give you this dick on the subway. Yes. And she got, they, I think they get up and back. That was the next that. scene. Well, not the next scene, because the next scene, he tell, oh, his homeboy comes up. He got like a little messenger dude. He comes up to Frank White at the table while they're talking. And Frank White basically tells him, like, yo, I want to meet up with, um, I don't remember the dude's name. It's like the Italian mob. Kingpins. Yeah, yeah, Italian kingpin dude. It's 
contact. I want to meet up with him and do touch him. Like, you know, he ain't going to fuck with you, but I might be able to get you in with, like, one of his subordinates or something. He's like, man, you just make this happen. I need to talk to him. And do walks off. He's like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. So the next scene is homie meeting up with the Italian cats. And he tells him, like, yo, Frank White is out. Frank White wants to talk to you. <sighs> Italian dude is like, yo, I ain't talking to no nigga lovers. Yes. So it's like, ooh, you yes. going to die. I, or at least I hope you die already. <laughs> And so he's like, you know, Frank ain't gonna like that. And he's like, you know what? The Italian dude pulls his dick out and pisses on homie's shoes. And was like, tell Frank White that. Tell Frank White. I said, fuck you. The disrespect. <laughs> Pissed all on my man's shoes. And he just kind of mm-hmm. looked up at him like, all right, bro. That's what's up. <laughs> Damn. So told him to get the fuck out and don't come back. So homie leave. Mm-hmm. Then you cut to the subway train. It's empty, except yes. for Frank White and his little lawyer homegirl. Yes. He in there filling her up, got her titty all out, mm-hmm. rubbing on her nipples and squeezing on her, kissing her and everything, going in. Yes. You see these, some hoodlums. Yeah, these yeah. three dudes come in, like, ready to rob them because they like, yo, empty your pockets or yo, give me your money. Yes. Girlie get nervous. Your boy Frank White just kind of look over and I'm like, what's okay, up? Yeah, what, okay, yeah, okay. What y'all, what y'all want? <laughs> he's like, he pulled a gun and he pulls a gun out on the three dudes. Mm-hmm. Like, cause after well, at first he opens up his jacket so he can see he got a gun on him, then he pulls it out. Yeah. And then he just kind of lay all just kind of look at each other like, uh oh. Cause the I don't think they had guns. Mm-hmm. I think they had like like bat like, chains shit. and yeah. knives and shit. So they ain't had no yeah. chopper. Some shanks. Yeah. So then he, he kind of puts the gun down. He throws some money. He throws this big ass wad of money at the main dude. Yes. He's like, come to the Plaza Hotel tomorrow night or something like that. Tell him you're looking for Frank White. I got a job for you. Yes. And they look confused and they just kind of back out like, all right. That's some new shit to them. Yeah. Nigga, we came to rob you. You telling us to get a job? Okay. Yeah. He gave you a lot okay. of money. Gave you more money. You probably was going to get off anybody yes. that whole night. Yes. And gave you a job. Amazing. Cool shit. Never lost his cool. Your boy barely loses his cool this whole movie. Yeah, right? So I love this dude. And I was telling PJ too, I don't know what Fat Joe video it is, but there's a Fat Joe video where he recreates this scene from this movie. I have never seen it. I need to find it. out which one it is and show it to you. But is he, it early Joe? It's like mid 2000s Joe, like lean no. back, lean back, era, Terror Squad era. Mm, damn. Is it that? It's not that video. One of them, I don't even remember what all songs came out around that time. One of those songs that's around mm-hmm. lean back era. Somebody know, somebody let me know. Yeah, right. I know the songs, but I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't the big. I ain't got like a big fat Joe. I don't have no albums of his at all. I got big oh, pun. I don't oh, have fat Joe. There you go. The original fat Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Next scene comes up. Mm-hmm. Frank White runs up on the mafia dudes. I was just pissing on his homie's shoes. Yes. He just baby just runs up in there like no fucks given. Like yo, what y'all doing? Mm-hmm. Like, y'all playing games? I want to play. Yeah. Then we'll deal me out. Give me some card. <laughs> And playing blackjack. Yeah, and I think yes. he wins too, right? Yes. He wins his hand. Yes. So he basically tells dude. No, no drugs go out. Don't no games of blackjack happen. Yes. Unless I'm a part of it. And homie says, somebody, you know, you got a lot of nerve coming up here. And basically like, yeah, you're right. But I ain't what I said still stand, mm-hmm. homie. Mm-hmm. And dude says something that pisses him off. You remember what he said? No. He said something that pisses Frank White no, off. Frank yeah. White just pops off yeah. like yeah. shoot him <laughs> right then and there. Just pulls the guns out and chops him. In front of all these oh, people. Yes. And they didn't do shit. And he keeps shooting him. Like he shoots him like three or four times. Talking to his mans. And, and at the same time, he's like, yo, I'm running this shit now. Pop, pop. <laughs> and if y'all want to come work for me, work for somebody better that won't cheat y'all, y'all come fuck with me. Pop, pop, pop. Yes. And he says, you're welcome. <laughs> then he, as he walks out, he comes back and shoots him again. Then he walks out for sure that time. So that motherfucker is good and dead. <laughs> oh, and as he's walking out, he's like, if anyone you want to come with me, you know, I'm at the Plaza Hotel. Ask for Frank White. He says the same thing he said on the subway. Mm-hmm. And, and two of the dudes. And two of the two, like, little lackeys dude that was watching the door, they walk out with him. They're like, I'm out, bro. <laughs> That's all you got to do. I ain't never seen no shit like that. Yeah, basically, the older cats, all the younger cats was, like, down. They was, like, out. Mm-hmm. The older fat dudes. That's what he told me. He's like, when I was in jail, all y'all got fat. Yeah. Wanting why everybody else stay skinny. Baby, y'all ain't, y'all in this for yourselves. Ain't mm-hmm. nobody else eating other than y'all. Yes. Your boy Frank White was on that shit. Your boy Ace Boogie shit from Painted Force. Everybody, everybody eats, B. Everybody eats, B. Niggas Damn. get shot every day, B. <laughs> You be alright, nigga. You be alright. You tough, right? (laughs) (laughs) Damn. Uh, Well, after that, it's just a quick little scene. After that, there's like the main detective, older cat, investigating. You just see he looking up Frank White, all these little stats and shit on the old school computer. Yeah. And I just remember laughing because parole was spelled wrong. (laughs) How'd they spell it? P A R O L or some shit like that. Mm. Parole. Payroll. After this, he's somewhere. Oh, he went to a stage play. He's watching some weird ass stage play mm-hmm. about like some people on chain, like some jail shit or something. Yeah, and he meets up with who is that? He meets up with like I don't know if he's like the mayor or some another little political dude or yeah. something. But they start talking about shit going down in the city. Mm-hmm. 
and he's basically like Frank White's like yo you can't like take these hospitals out to poor neighborhoods they need that shit too so that's Frank White's thing throughout the whole movie that he's trying to basically build up his old yes. neighborhood so all the rich people ain't the only ones that got shit yes and so dude told him and dude I, I was telling PJ dude is the guy from do the right thing and I was like mama 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 welcome that dude yes. and he's also the same dude to reference a show our movie we did on the show he's the guy from Tales from the Hood that was hanging out with the super racist dude at the plantation that got killed by the Will Smith doll yes like that same dude yes. that got thrown down the steps it's him and he tells him like look basically you know what you want to do you want to if you want to fund it yourself you go right ahead frank white's like maybe i will homie and dude's like all right yeah, yeah. sure yeah, yeah you got 16, 16 million, million. Mm -hmm. and he's like yeah i can get that <laughs> and dude's like oh, oh well, do you fam. Yeah, right yeah, make yeah. it happen if you can make Shit. it happen hey it's all good <laughs> keep that hospital right here homie mm-hmm after this, after that, you know, he leaving the party, he go outside, and you see some cops. The cops run up on him. It's the old detective dude. Yes. And then it's the two young cats he got with him. He got Horatio. Da David Caruso. Or you That's say? his name. Yeah, David Horatio. David Caruso's name. Horatio is CSI Miami, right? Yeah. And then you got Wesley Snipes. Yes. Early Wesley. Young Wes. They're the, they're the cop crew that's like basically trying to get Frank White put back in jail. Mm -hmm. They throw his ass in the car, and then David Crusoe, for some reason, starts like driving all crazy, driving toward traffic. He's having to swerve and zigzag sporadically. I guess maybe trying to scare Frank White or something. And, and then they, they, your boy turns off into an like alley and almost runs into a damn wall, like legit. Like they had to break yeah. super hard. They pull him out the car and they open up the trunk, and it's a dead body. And I forget whose dead body it is. I can't think it's the Italian dude. Yeah. Man. And they're like questioning about it. Like, you know anything about this? Like, I don't know what the fuck that is, bro. That's a body. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> they got mad. Yep. Because there was no evidence against them. So, of course, they, they had, had to let them leave. Go. Yep. And after that, you cut the cops. They're at like a police reception at a little bar, a little Irish pub. Mm-hmm. And you know, they're having fun doing police <laughs> shit at the bar. Your boy David Crusoe was like the best man. So, he's saying all kind of jokes and shit. Mm-hmm. Reminded me of the scene where, with the pun dude in Goodfellas. I was on stage. He kept doing all the little puns. He kept hearing, doo -doo after everything yes. he was doing. It reminded me of that type of shit. Find out Wesley Snipes is married. He got a white woman and some mixed kids. And I think David Crusoe, I don't, I don't know if it's his sister or his brother. Somebody he related to. One of them is the bride and groom. One of the people. I don't remember which one it was. The brother, right? Was it his brother? I can't oh, remember if he was the, I the, if I can't remember if he was the brother to the sister or the brother to the dude. I don't remember. Whatever. He's yeah. somebody related to somebody in the yeah. wedding. And then homeboy older cat leaves out because he's like, yo, I ain't, I ain't feeling this. <laughs> Too many people around. I feel like yeah. like that. Every time I'm around big crowds of people, I'm like, yo, I can chill for about five to me. I'm like, I, I got to find a duck house spot mm -hmm. somewhere. Got to go somewhere. Oh, Too many people around. I get annoyed. I start wanting to punch people. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Be in the fucking club and a girl walk up like, you want to dance? Like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> reaction. My natural yeah. reaction. I'm sorry. I can't do big crowds of people, man. Uh, get anxiety. And I just don't want to be bothered. It's like, leave me alone. And you probably playing a bunch of fucking music I don't want to hear it too. Yeah. On top of that. Yeah, that's when I start getting pissed. Like, all right, man. Like, I got to go. Yeah. Y'all ain't got the music right. Yeah. Like, it ain't like paid it for they had Dougie Fresh playing. <laughs> right. I can get it's still chill. That. Just, yeah. Okay. Especially here, they had the little country music playing. I definitely can't do that. That's like, oh, yeah. That's like gun to temple, <laughs> gun to chin, gun to, like, in the mouth. Like, <laughs> oh, down. God. It ain't even a pistol. You hear that shit? That's when you just put the submachine oozing. I'm fucking just, like, see chunks in your fucking back of your head just flying out. <laughs> Like, what the f- Oh, I guess it was too much. Damn, so I played that fucking country music, didn't I? God damn it. <laughs> you had one job, guys. <laughs> oh, I told you not to play that shit. Right. It'd be like the end of Kings when you just see everybody's head just start blowing up and shit. Uh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Turn that shit off. Damn. We was actually talking about country music. I forget who I was talking to. I think it was Ayana. We're talking about when Nelly did the country song. Country grammar. No, no, no. The actual country song with the Tim McGraw dude. Oh, and I'm over and I am like not thinking about it. No. Oh. I just know it because it was, what the fuck are you song. doing, Nelly? Because we were talking about it because they were like, we were talking about Nelly and that's why he fell off. I said, that's about the time he fell off when he started doing like that shit. Yes. At least he fell off, I think, in the quote unquote, the urban community. Because I think that album sold on the play, got played on the country stations and shit and all that. Did it? And like the pop station. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's because he did more than that. Because he after that he kind of started doing a couple more of those type of songs. You know? oh, he tried to do the crossover, but he pretty much just crossed over it's, all the way. <laughs> yeah, is that why he was on like the Real Husbands of Probably. Hollywood with Kevin Hart? Just because he was. Uh, I just know the country grammar Nelly went away a long time ago. Yeah, and ain't came back. No, no, he hasn't. And that was around the time I think it started to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was done when that one came out. I was like, man, yeah. 
Game props, he started fucking the Shawnee. I gave him props for that, though. Yeah, That's right? why I was, I was like, if I was doing that, I'd be like, fuck music for a minute, too. I got some work to put in. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me go make some babies. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a reference for y'all. If y'all know Blazing Saddles. No, no, I do not. You ever seen Blazing Saddles? No. Oh, man. With who? Uh, Gene Wilder, Cleavon Little. Gene Wilder. That's Willy Wonka. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. And who? Cleavon Little is a black dude. It's basically, it's a parody of Western movies. Parody. And Gene Wilder and Cleavon Little are the good guys. Mm. And Cleavon Little gets promoted to sheriff in this little town. Mm-hmm. And everybody's bugged out because it's a black dude. And so, you know, hilarity ensues yeah, from that see. point. Ha, ha, ha. Gene Wilder's like his right-hand dude that be with him doing shit. Mm. <laughs> it's funny mm. there's a part though where he's like he's at the little town meeting he's like excuse me while I whip this out and everybody like kind of shields their eyes or backs away or something like that <laughs> like he's talking about his dick and shit <laughs> shit and it's a part too where he's with the girl and the lights go off he's supposed to be fucking her she, I guess she hears his pants zip and she's like it's true it's true or some shit uh, <laughs> funny that shit's funny as hell. we gotta watch Blazing funny. Saddles one day yeah, yeah I don't funny. own it I need to get it I don't think I have it no more I had it on DVD I think I left my bro Years of ago. Of course. And you know, actually, that's why nobody brought shit no it's more. It's probably your boy. Right. It's probably saying, motherfucker, my How High DVD. <laughs> Does he have that too? Yeah. Oh, uh, shit. I replaced that one. I'm like, yeah, I need my How High back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I wonder what he's doing now. Probably watching How High. <laughs> <laughs> watching Blazing Saddles at How High. That was the funniest. <laughs> tangent. Oh, here we go. It's already on a tangent anyway. When I first started going over this guy's house, oh yeah, there was a guy who shall remain nameless, mm-hmm. but he was a he was a character. He was one of those guys who you know he kind of had something wrong with him, but he was still normal oh, for the actually, most part. I was part. talking about somebody else. You're talking about him. Oh, yeah. That, I forgot about the end. Yeah, okay. No. Oh, not him. No, it was another dude I was talking about. I forgot he did have something, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Was it a game? It was a game. Yeah. yeah the movies game. was another dude. Ah. He had the games. I never got back, but I didn't care, though. Ah. Ben replaced them decades ago, bro. Damn, man. Long story short, this guy just always popped up at the window. Like, as soon as he got home. It's like he had a radar. <laughs> that within 10 <laughs> minutes, <laughs> oh, let's go knock on the window, Brent's home. There would be ah. And would only come out like it would come out five minutes, tell me how his day was going. Yeah. Next, ask me how I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I'm a good baby. He'd shake my hand, dap me, and be like, all right, man, I'm out, bro. I'll let you later yeah. on. Like, oh. like five minute friend. <laughs> but it's, all right, it's, catch it's you tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. He was cool though. I know him I've known him since elementary school because I used to tutor him in elementary school. Words. I used to help him out with his work to teach you. You tutored somebody? Yeah. I couldn't see you doing that. Not to brag, but I mean, I was smarter <laughs> than a lot of my friends. I mean, I, I was highly intelligent. You know I mean? So they, when people needed help, they had a little program they said, and it was like, just partner people up with certain people that needed the extra help. And I, and I, I, I signed up for it, or I got picked for it. And I ended up, I mean, that's how me and him got cool, yeah. That's just not in your lane. I, I don't see you. I mean, I don't mind helping people. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I know, but just in your school, I just don't. Oh, yeah. Up, in your school, you know. Your schooling, that doesn't... <laughs> in the early days. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was before I was like... What's the word I'm looking for? Like the <laughs> the emo type dude that just didn't want fucking all that. Elementary school, I was a lot more like... What's the word? Like extroverted? Ah. I was. Well. It was middle school and it became fuck all y'all niggas. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. You're cool, fuck you. Hit him with the ice cube. Fuck you, fuck you, especially you. <laughs> I don't let you go. <laughs> yeah. That was around the time, like I said, beating up dudes in his bathroom stalls and shit. Ah, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, elementary school. Nah, nah, yeah, that was, it was cool. That was a I, I, I forgot my homie. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen him in a long time. Yeah, right? What the fuck was he talking about? Um. <laughs> Where was we at? Oh, the reception there at the reception. Yes, yes. Um, next thing. Homie, the messenger dude is meeting up with the Asian cats now, the Asian mafia, triads or mm-hmm. whatever the fuck they are, I don't know. Um <laughs> probably get so mad every time like uh, somebody refers to them as a triad. God damn it, we're not the triad. Motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, Jay. It's a Chinese mafia. <laughs> whatever. I think that yeah. Be politically correct. I know, right? I don't know what the fuck. I don't know. Oh uh, funny. It'd be like every time you talk about the, somebody say something about the black ones, it'd be like the bloods. Yeah. <laughs> what you fuck around saying to the wrong group of people, though, you might get shot. Mm-hmm. You gotta know them colors. What you say, homie? What you, you say, say cuz? There it is. <laughs> there it goes. 
Nope. <laughs> but he basically he, t- he basically offers him the same thing. I think it's the other cat. Like baby Frank wanna work with you. And I don't remember what dude say so he basically kinda disses Frank. And he walks out. I forget what he says. He's like, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to work with that motherfucker. It's basically yeah, so what it sounds up to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So dude's like, all right. <laughs> I'll tell him. Next oh, time. and he said, tell him, let him know I'm not the Latinos. Or yeah, Italians. let him know I'm not the Italian. I'm yeah. not the Italian grease bar or something. Yeah, shit like yeah. That. Like, okay. Everybody got the message. Was, yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Next thing you know, you cut to your boy Lawrence Fishburne at the chicken joint. <sighs> Wanna tell him about this one? This guy <laughs> walks in. What happens? Was he acts a fool for real. Yeah, he just bugs out. Yeah. He bugs out because dude at the counter acting like an asshole though, legit like on some bullshit. Because he goes up and he's like ordering. He ordering mad food though. He ordered like fourteen onion pieces rings. of chicken, some onion rings, some cornbread. He said, "Let me get six corns too." Yeah, six corns. <laughs> yeah. Or six corns, not cornbread. Sorry. Uh, or, or something else too. And dude just kind of all funny acting. But then as he's taking the order, there's these little kids at the arcade machines yeah. in there. And he's like, hey, get away from the machines. You ain't got no money. Mm-hmm. And Lawrence Fishburne puts up his hand. Like, he's going to smack him. Like, what the fuck wrong with you? Never yeah. asking them kids like that. He's like, you got my order? He's like, yeah, I got your order. So when dude yeah. takes it back, he walks over to the kids. They order with like their grandma or their mom or something. Mm-hmm. Hands them all coins. Like, yo, go play the arcade game. Go play the arcade game. And he, he said, respectfully, ma'am, here you go. Yeah, he's like, you know. Tossed her 100. I think it was like 200. Oh. It was 200. It was two bills. So fuck. it might be 200 bucks. That's nice. And so he goes back up to the counter. And while he's talking to the dude, Oh, yeah, oh, you know, he boys always run up. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the cops came because he had his homie out waiting in the car. Mm-hmm. And in the background through the window, you just see his boy getting yoked out the yes, fucking car by the police. Fucked up. And getting stolen. Yeah, like they're punching, yes. like doing some like 2018 shit to him. I heard the funniest shit. Uh, what's up? So, you know how Rodney King, oh, no. that shit was taped? Yeah. So they were like, basically, imagine how long he had to be getting fucked up before. Because it wasn't like cell phones. It was, no, you had it was to go like, get the video shit. Camera. Yeah, the big one. And they had to start the show. I was like, damn, that makes sense. It's real shit it because just... you see what's happening. You got to run back to the car, grab the camera. Yeah, that's what they were like. Yeah, so and probably make sure the tape long. and everything is set up. Yes. And that's when they actually had tapes inside. Yes. yes. Imagine how long it actually took for it to catch what we caught up. You see up. what he looked like afterwards. That motherfucker yeah. got fucked up. Yes. Did he, he? I mean, I know he won, but did he win like a lot of money? Or? Them, them cops got off on that shit. None of them got it convicted for. They all three of them that's got off. That's where the riots came. Yeah, from. that's where the riots happened. Yeah. And that's why Ice Cube made the song, We Had to Tear This Motherfucker Up. <laughs> because we had to tear this motherfucker up. He said it was only a matter of time. Like, what the fuck? No, yeah. Shit. That's wow. it. That's all that shit stemmed from that. That's why with the OJ verdict came, that's why that was such a big thing. that happened after the Rodney King thing, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. And so it was like after that, everybody figured, you know, OJ going to get locked up because, you know, with the cops. Yeah. The cops were on video. Yeah. Doing Beating shit. somebody and got yes. off. And so you never figured that. But then that's why when he got off all the black people, even though a lot of people probably figured he might have done it, they always cheer like, hey, fuck it. Hey, black dude got out of jail. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> we won finally. Yeah, right? You know, this motherfucking probably was guilty. He, we won. Fuck it. Like, we'll take that. Take that I W. Let too. them take that L. That's why it's too. funny. You look at all the clips between like there be big groups of white people. They all look like pissed off, and you just see a black people in the background like yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the background jumping up and down. Damn and right. Oh, shit. Ain't nobody like fucking with OJ. Like I said, that was just because we was happy somebody won. But man, fuck right. OJ. He's still out, right? Man, he ain't done nothing to go back. I don't, th- I don't think he's going back. Ah. He did some dumb shit that went there, but I think he's still out. Ah, of course he did. Yeah, because he was on some show talking about, you know, if he had done it or some shit. He even had that book come out like, If I Did It. The hypotheticals. Yeah. <laughs> Your boy man, was making mad. Dumbass. <laughs> did he... Did he he just basically seemingly admitted to it. Ah, uh, well, I was about to say, like, yeah. Like, I did didn't do it, but I mean, if I did, though, I mean, I'd have did this. This, this is this how it... <laughs> yeah. How dumb could you be? I mean, hey, he was making money off that shit. Wow. He had his little prank show juiced. You been juiced. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's... Oh, wow. Man. Fuck OJ. Or as the game said, fuck orange juice. <laughs> oh, what's next? Oh, yeah, so yeah, Larry and his boy, they get arrested at the chicken joint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Frank White receives word, and he basically... S- no, before he even got oh. word, the fucking shootout happens in, like, I guess... Oh, Korea like, style, yeah, yeah, Korea yeah, time, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. They just roll up and just start dumping. Your boy just gets out with the Uzi, just spraying yes. everybody. He sprays the Asian dude's chick that he had, her, his little number one girl. That's why I fuck with Frank White, because he yeah. got his hands dirty, too. It yeah, wasn't he was like, right there in the yes. front, like... Yes, everybody, yes. The machine... 
And it's always he always had to machine them. Yes. Maximum impact on them bullets. Damn it, Frank. And, but he eventually chased the little head Asian dude down to the ground mm -hmm. and was like, put the gun to his head, like, yeah, you need to tell me where that shit at, bro. And then you cut to yeah. them. They got big ass buckets of MSG for, well, I think with cocaine. Mm -hmm. They rolled on them out. And as the camera cut, like, fade or pulls back, you see the Asian dude dead and hanging from the ceiling. So they yes. really fucked him up. Yes. And then he finds out? Oh, I uh -oh. skipped ahead. That's my fault. Uh oh. I skipped way ahead. He didn't, that ain't when the shootout happened. The shootout happened after he got your boy out of jail. He met up with him before that. He met up with him and they talked at the hospital. That's what I was yes, thinking of. Yes, 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 So my bad. Rewind that. Yes. After Larry Fritchburn got arrested, that he met up with the agent dude at the hospital. Was trying to get him to invest money into the hospital that he was trying mm -hmm. to get the $16 million for. Mm -hmm. Agent dude was like, I don't give a fuck about this shit. I want money. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. I ain't worried about giving money to other people. Yes. So that pissed off Frank White. So Frank White and his mind probably already knew, yeah, you dead. You're done now. <laughs> God, then he bailed cool. Lawrence Fishburne out of jail. Or he, yes. had his, he had his lawyer go do it for him. Yeah. Then he gave him no fucks. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne came out with his boy. They all hyped. David Crusoe, Wesley Snipes, and the detective come over looking pissed. Immediately. David Crusoe spits in Lawrence Fishburne's face. And your boy Larry with the super acting wiped it across his lips. Uh, and then licked his fingers too. And started laughing. He gave his boy daft like, yeah, nigga, we ain't fucking with y'all. And your boy. I could not. <laughs> Acting, yeah. Uh, now I was just laughing the whole time. Every time they cut to your boy Wesley Snipes, he just got the death glare, <laughs> not even blinking. He just stirring these motherfuckers down like if looks could kill them. Motherfuckers would have been like in pieces, homie. They've been dead as fuck. They'd have been like Thanos blowing people away or something. They've been dead as fuck. Immediately. And then uh, the, the dude that came out with Wesley Snipes is laughing because uh, Lord Fishback threw some money at him. He said, here, go buy some flowers for your friend or something. Yes. And then your boy, Lord Fishback's boy picks one up and he picks up one of the bills and he's like, yo, get the cheap ones. <laughs> Left the other one on the ground. And then he says, oh, y'all can kiss my ass. He pulls his pants down, y'all can kiss my yes. ass too. They're just playing the cops right to their face. I love it. Now I'll get in the car and then the, uh, the little white lawyer chick is just standing there and they start mugging the fuck out of her. Mm -hmm. Old school lead detective just is like, you happy with yourself? Like, he just, she just basically is like, fuck you, and gets in the car. Yeah, call my. You, you got, got a problem something. with it? Yeah. yeah, prosecute me then. There bitch. you go. And then, then the shootout happens in uh, Chinatown or wherever, mm -hmm. and all that happens. So okay, I got ahead of myself. I want to get to shooting again. I'm sorry. <laughs> get to the violence. But of course, they got all that cocaine, all that money. Next scene is bam, we at the hospital function. He he got the money for that shit, sixteen yes. minutes. Got Freddie Jackson singing in the fucking yes. ceremony, but he ain't singing none of the songs we know. He's singing a wax song. No, yeah, yeah. Some he ain't singing scripted. like you are my lady. He ain't singing that. Mm. He ain't saying for old times' sake. He ain't singing that. He sings you for you are my lady. You my you are my lady. You everything I need and more. I got you. Hold on, my, my, my. you are my lady. He has another song too. Though, like I can't think of which one it is. Wow. Have you ever loved somebody? Uh, you ever loved somebody? Have you ever loved somebody? Uh, Freddie Jackson. What song would you just? Wow, Freddie. You are my uh, lady. That's right. Yeah, I was about to say forever, my lady. No, forever. not that. Well, that's Jodeci. Yeah. Forever, <laughs> my lady. Wow. That yeah. That is. Him. That's Freddie Jackson. Why does he sound like shit in person? <laughs> No offense, Freddie, if you're listening. Maybe he's one of the people that saved in that studio editing, I guess. Yeah. That's my joint, though. Yeah, that's my joint, though. <laughs> yeah, Freddie Jackson. That's a, he ain't singing under the good songs. That's my shit right there. Oh, shit. That's a dude to buy. If you buy Greatest City, that's probably a nice little CD. Right? That's my joint right there, boy. Bring back the jazz station. Fuck. All right. I know, right? That used to be, that's what I used to have my radio set to in the morning. When that's I used to a get good up for thing school. to work up to. Yeah, you wake up. It. it used to be, a lot of times you wake up and they would be playing Mr. Magic by Grover Washington Jr. Mr. Magic. Doo doo. Doo doo. Ah, doo doo. Yes. Doo doo. Doo doo. Doo doo. Doo doo. The West of the Funk. You gotta just get in that groove. It was that, or the best, the best mornings, no joke, would be when they played Cool in the Gang Summer Madness. Mm. When that song came out, it was gonna be all right day. <laughs> oh, that got me started right. <laughs> yes, today is the day. When that song came out, I was like, oh yeah. It's like, all right, let's, let's, get, let's get it going. 
school, nothing. Homework, R- nothing. R- 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 the days they're playing something like one of the cool joints, one of the like old school like throwback. What's the, what's the what they used to call them back in the day? Where the black folks used to, used to like chill at back in the day and like drink and shit. What is it called? What is oh, it? what is that called? What is man? it? Damn. Oh. I don't the know. It'll, club. it'll, it'll probably damn. come to me eventually. But yeah, it's like this song that will play in that type of spot. Because it was like, um, you actually asked me about this song not too long ago. The song that um, UGK sampled for Riding Dirty. Yes. And that showbiz and AG sample. Yes. That song, you stay, every now and again, that song would play. And if that song ever came okay. on, oh, that was a good day. Okay. That was a good ass day. A that little was... Bill Withers? Is that? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. A, day. that's a good day, too. <laughs> damn. You just keep on using me. Damn, that's yes. Until you use me up and then do, you do, use do, me do, up. Do, 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 do. I never, I, so, so I, never, I never played the sample, did I? No. West Montgomery. I ain't got a bad news. And it just ain't got the news. And it just keep on using me. And then you use me up. Yeah, there you go. This is the sample right there. That they took it from? Oh, let me find a better sound. one that's kind of... Yeah. A song called Angel by West Montgomery. It, when you hear it, it's coming up. When this song came on, that was a good morning, too. Damn. I, I be bumping this in the car sometimes. I be chilling at night, like right Angel. home. With the cool breeze going with the window down, blasting this, nobody else on the street, man, that's like the illest feeling. That's good. Only 3,000 views? Wow. Because nobody knows any good music. But yeah, man, that's that's a good morning right there. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Frist the Night Owl. Anywho. Yeah, I know, right? We got to get back to this movie eventually. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The hospital function going on there by giving Frank White his props. Props. The cops are watching it on TV, and they super hating on him. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, we doing all this, and he out killing people, and he's getting celebrated like he's the fucking mayor of New York, King of New York yes. and whatnot. I think that's where the line, the title of the movie comes in. King of New York. And David Caruso is basically like, man, look, only way we're going to take him down is if we go, you know, basically outside the books. Mm-hmm. Old school cats like, man, you don't need to be doing that. You stoop to his level and... Him and, Wesley, him and Wesley Snipes are like, nah, fuck that, bro. We're mm-hmm. going to take him down. So every time somebody gets killed, it's going to be our fault because we ain't doing nothing about it. Right. So basically, right. They, they, they get their punisher on, basically. Yeah. Oh, and then <laughs> the next scene, they celebrating uh, Frank White. And these people are celebrating. They're in the hotel, and they just partying super hard. And this was by far <laughs> one of the best scenes in the movie because we even had to rewind it. This is where the rewind button came in. PJ, ah, yes. Tell the people what the fuck we laughed at for about ten minutes. This guy wasn't it. This the old boy. His old boy from do the right thing. Yeah, Just yeah. Do, uh, 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 Lawrence Fishburne's little home, homeboy. That yes, we're married with. yes. He had a what is it? A spoon? Whatever he had. Like a little a little he cocaine. He was going spoon. hard, going back to back. Your man was oh, snorting cocaine yes. like machine gun ain't snorting. Yeah, yeah. He's right. Putting up to his nose like. <laughs> <laughs> He did like four huffs at like back to back. He's yes. scooping like a fucking circle motion. Just sniff, 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 sniff. And then he took. He's like, ah. sniff, sniff, like back at it. Like he was going hard. And that shit, man. PJ lost oh our shit when that happened because we were cragging up. That is amazing. Please <laughs> get it in. That has got to be. I wonder what that feeling is like. Yeah, like that like first it. rush Man, with you, you gone <laughs> because you well you saw because remember it like the camera goes around and we see everybody just chilling. Frank White's even chilling, I think, with the little lawyer chick. Yeah, but when it pans back around, oh yeah, he was oh, done. Yeah, the, the the one of the little little hoes basically was trying to kiss all up on him, and he looked like he was trying to kiss her, but that motherfucker was just sitting there like his, his mouth was barely moving. His she was like kissing on him, like sucking on his lips, and he was just like yes. <laughs> slow motion and shit, like couldn't even. <laughs> Functions all bad. Oh. So when the people like get hype off this shit, why do they get like the ones that just? <sighs> well, they say they yes. say it boosts your adrenaline and shit. Oh, well, because remember this is the same thing. He does get hype and it gets him killed pretty soon in the movie. Mm. We'll get to it. Okay. Because at this chill spot, the little messenger dude brings in a. A guy, I guess, from L.A. He's like, ah. they're trying to work with, yeah. Yes, yes. And, you know, they're talking. He tests out the coke. He's like, yo, this some good shit. They mm-hmm. make a deal. He, they 
uh, Frank White wants 12 mil. Dude was like, I got six, but I can you now get my, my investment back and I'll give you the other six. And uh, Frank White's like, no, no give me half the money. It. You get half the fucking drugs, there bro. There you go. And they're like, fuck it, all right. They're like, where's the drugs at? Frank White, like, they next door. So messenger goes to take him over there. But then when they get there, the messenger dude pops the guy that's covering it. So you see some shady shit is going yes. down. And the cop actually, um, oh, I said the cop. I just ruined the surprise. There you got to say. Whatever. No but the point um, comes through. The L.A. dude, he, he makes his homeboy stay there with him. So the homeboy, they take his bags upstairs. One of the girls goes up there and she's like licking cocaine off his chest. Yeah. And they're about to unzip, take him out of his pants, probably about to slob on that knob. Mm-hmm. Like corn on the car, check in with me. And do your job. Yeah. Late on the bed. And give me head. Don't, Don't have to that. ask. Don't have to beg. Yeah. Juicy is my name. Sex is my game. Let's call the boys. Let's run a train. Squeeze on my nuts. Lick on my butt. The natural curly hair. Please don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit. <sighs> it's funny. People like, oh man, y'all sing that song a lot. Well, you know what? Like, getting head seems to come up a lot on this podcast. Yes, it does. It seems to be in a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah, good ones, apparently. Yes. <laughs> it is not just us with this fascination That's- of <laughs> sex. <laughs> We're not the only ones with sex on the brain. Yes, yes. What the hell is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, homeboy doing that down there doing some shady shit. Mm-hmm. And then cops burst in. Or not even cops. Dudes with masks on. I keep fucking ruining the surprise. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> but fuck it. They I had me. I'm, I, I, uh, they had me for a minute. I might as well just go ahead. I've already said it twice. Might as well just spoil it. Yes. Some dudes running with masks on. It's David Crusoe, Wesley Snipes, and some other cops. Mm-hmm. But they're covering their face so they don't know it's them. Mm-hmm. And they that big ass shootout happens. And this is what I was talking about. Your boy, that was just scooping the cocaine in his nose. Yeah. He gets up and tries to do it's, the scar face. Yeah. He just starts high. shooting, and eating bullets, but he <laughs> backs up against the wall and he eats too many of them. He just gets, they spray his ass. Like that He's motherfucker, done. like Christmas tree lit up, like <sighs> holes everywhere. Oh, bad. That motherfucker, like he just got out of church. He holy as fuck. I made PJ fall back in the seat with that one. Oh, my God. Mission accomplished. I got PJ to crack up. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Put that on the t shirt. Put that on the t shirt. <laughs> God, with the hand God like this. With the hand making the cross formation. <laughs> I didn't even realize I did that as I was saying. That's what made me. <laughs> oh my God. Blessed are the homies that's chopped up. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Oh, Church people are like funny. turning this off. Right, uh-uh, that ain't even? funny. That ain't that's not funny. funny. Look, it was funny. <laughs> was in good taste okay yeah, it was all in uh, fun y'all had y'all religion talk in the state property episode that's my turn to say something that's what I'm gonna say I ain't got nothing to say when it's serious yeah. when you joking all I got me in I'm here baby yeah. <laughs> shit oh man was the homie dead as fuck a lot of people get killed on both sides mm-hmm. like, both during sides this this is the main people. shootout yeah yeah and to the point where um Frank White and uh, Lawrence Fishburne they run out to the car and they about the to bang too. out yep. but um, Dave, David Crusoe Wesley Snipes and you find out later it's the guy that got married but the married dude he jumps and grabs hold of the car door and he's hanging on dummy and you know Wesley or not Wesley Snipes but um, Lawrence Fishburne is like yo we gotta get him, off the, get him off the door so it's a fucking fire hydrant coming up yes. and your boy <laughs> Christopher Walken or Frank White swerves over and we get something we haven't had in a yes. long time yes. or at least that yes. we've noticed we get a motherfucking dummy kill. Yes. And it is glorious. It's so funny. Your uh, boy is hanging onto the car door and he sees it coming. They actually pulled a mask off of him and Lawrence Fishman's like, it's the fucking cops. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, what makes him swerve over into the fire hydrant. Like, Fuck this shit. And when he hits the fire hydrant, it's just like that dummy just literally smashes <laughs> up and his arms are sticking out to the side and everything. Like, like it's the there. stiffest fucking yes. thing in the world. Yes. And it is the best. I don't know. I still don't know if it beats Truck Turner, but it's, no, it's no, right it there. The Truck, Turner's funny. Not, Truck Turner probably would never be top. I might as well not even put that in the category. That's like there's the number one spot and then there's Truck Turner on top of it. There you go. This right there now takes go. the number one spot. The untouchable. Yeah, That's the Truck untouchable. Turner's untouchable. You never beat that. Can't. If you want to hear what we're talking about, go watch the Truck Turner episode. Yeah. But, um, or what, listen, whatever, you know what I mean. That motherfucker dead as fuck. He's dead. Yeah. You are done now. You're done now. You lose. You get nothing. <laughs> Good day, sir. Good day, sir. When David Crusoe sees that, and he gets pissed. So a big car chase happens, and they're you know, going up the highway or the uh, bridge or something. Yeah, this shit was like 10 minutes. 
Yeah, they're going hard, doing pit maneuvers, and mm-hmm. Norris Fishburne is off the top bus. And that's all to me and PJ mm-hmm. said. It looked like a fucking Grand Theft Auto level mission. Yes, literally. You got like you, like you would play as Lawrence Fishburne, you like shooting at the cops from on top of the thing. Because mm-hmm. they flip over. There's multiple cop cars or, or undercover cars, and they flip one of them over, and they're yes. dead. And then David Cruz on them like have to hit the brakes, so they run into a regular ass car going up the street, mm-hmm. and their car kind of stalls out. Yes. So uh, Frank White and them get away. But they so they're they're cruising on the street trying to find them and they can't find get a hold of them. They're looking around. I think Wesley Snipes looks over, he's like, What's that? And Derek Cruz is like, It's nothing. Like they're gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they stop and they're just kind of sitting there. And all of a sudden you just cut, you see Lawrence Fishburne laughing, and he reverses his car super hard into him. Mm-hmm. And he gets out and runs. And Wesley Snipes chases after him. David Cruz is kind of shook. So he's like kind of they'll shake it off and he starts shooting into the empty car and yeah. he thinks Frank White is in there and he's like, fuck. Yeah. So you cut to Wesley Snipes like a dumbass. It's like, because it's almost a splinter cell shit because Lawrence yes. Fishburne is like hiding. But yes. Wesley Snipes is like antagonizing, like talking real loud, giving up his position every time he moves around. Dumbass. To the point where he goes by an empty little box car or something. Lawrence Fishburne with the fucking swiftness though yes, comes out like it's, ninja. Ra- it's raining he stepped into a puddle it made no sound that ninja he, he walked up on Wesley Snipes and I think Wesley Snipes grabbed him or he grabbed him and he shoots him in the chest or stomach or something mm-hmm. and they're holding on to each other Wesley Snipes is like oh and you know in shock like oh shit yeah then he really goes hard tries and, to choke him yeah and he, as he's dying he, he, he tried to choke Larry Larry bops him like two more times mm-hmm. and Lawrence, or now Wesley Snipes is kind of like slinking down yes. and he shoots him again and then now he's on the ground Yes. And he's talking shit to Wesley Snipes. And then you hear a voice. Hey, asshole. Or something like that. Yeah. Turn around. Blah, blah, blah. David Crusoe chops up Larry. And Larry's on the Damn. ground. And he starts tripping. He's like rolling around screaming. Like, look, <laughs> screaming and, all, and laughing and all kinds of shit. Like, you kill me, motherfucker. Oh, my God. And while, but while he's doing all that, David Crusoe runs up to Wesley Snipes. You see, he had a vest on. Mm-hmm. But the bullet went through the vest. Multiple bullets went through. And he's blood leaking all through that shit. I don't know why he thought he survived. So he, of course, he starts pressing on his chest right next to the gunshot wound, which I'm sure is not helping. Shit. Blood's coming out of his chest and his mouth. He's done. <laughs> You're done now. <laughs> Just die. Okay. And, and so Lawrence Fishburne is like laughing. He's like, You kill me, motherfucker. And Derek Crusoe, like, point blank, puts the gun right to his dome and just blah. You know what? Wish there you go. Done. You fucking dead. Lawrence Fishburne's dead as fuck. Yes. And so is Wesley Snipes. Yes. So next scene, of course, you cut to the hair on the funeral for Wesley Snipes and the little uh, husband cop guy. And Derek Crusoe's looking super salty because out of all his crew, he's the only one that survived that shit. He got about yes. five or six people fucking murdered. Yes. It was his fault. And he got his Wesley Snipes is basically like his homeboy that was like his best friend. So you got your best friend super murdered. <laughs> and so and the, and the older detective dude is just there looking at him like just dumbass. Like, <laughs> Should have fucking listened to me. I told you not to do that shit. Right. So David Crusoe runs off, runs to his car, is trying to start it, but it's stalling or not starting. So he starts punching that dashboard, crying like you motherfucker, stop it, <laughs> and he's crying. You see the limo creep up. All the windows is tinted. You don't know who's inside. Yes. It rolls up next to him. And he says, hey, you, and when he looks over, you see Christopher walking with this saw off shotgun, blast this motherfucker point blank range, yes. blow his fucking head off. Yes. Right at the funeral in broad daylight with all with these fucking cops, cops everywhere. Fucking zero fuck. The whole police force is in this fucking funeral. Yes. And he blabs his ass and drives off. Not even really speeds off. He just cruises off. That's some shit. Hits a corner and it's done. And of course, older detective dude knew who the fuck it was. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so pretty much he's the only one left now. David Crusoe so dead as fuck. So dead. And then you find out the homeboy, the messenger dude, he finds out that he sold him out with the cops. The cops had bribed the messenger to get him into the meeting, to get them in there. And they find that out. So Christopher Walken says to mummify him. Well, he doesn't say mummify him. I just like saying that after watching Caught Up now. Mummify him. <laughs> and so he walks away and in the background here, no, no, don't do it. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So the messenger dude is now dead as fuck. Everybody dies. He followed my rule. I talked about him paid in full. Motherfuckers do some shady shit. Blah. Yes. You're done now. You're done now. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> eats me. <beef>. Streets. <laughs> <laughs> so they show the detective. He comes home. Turn, bringing in his groceries. Hit the light. Oh shit. Frank White is sitting there. And he has a talk. And he's basically, basically like trying to def- back his case on all this shit. Because he's like, the one drug dealer was like pimping out young girls. Yeah. The Asian dude was like, smuggling in his own people making them work for him and then making them pay like eight hundred dollars to stay in his mm-hmm. complexes and you know, somebody was like fucking with somebody basically he's trying to say that every dude i killed was doing way worse shit than shit. i'm doing yeah and those people are dead now and i'm not gonna do business that way yes so he's basically trying to tell dude basically back up Just you relax, ain't gotta worry about man. me yeah. motherfuckers die they deserve it motherfucker. yeah 
man, of course, old school dude is like, you know, I'm not gonna let you do that, right? You know, you gotta go to fucking jail, dog. So then, what? Uh, I would say, what's up? Then Christopher Walken gets up and is like, you know what? Fuck you. Makes him handcuffs himself to a chair, and he just bangs out. He's like, you know, you have fun with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but homeboy has a little extra hidden gun because Christopher Walken took his gun from him. But of course, I, I was even thinking like, you know, he probably has a backup gun. They always the do like an anchor yeah. or something. He pulls that out, gets free, and he find they basically chases after uh, Christopher Walken, finds him on the subway. Christopher Walken, he's like, you know, I'm still not fucking with you. You're not. I'm not going to jail. Mm-hmm. He grabs a, he grabs a random woman, puts the gun to her head, and is like, yo, don't move. He's like, I'm not gonna hurt you, but don't move but though. Don't, move. don't yes. fucking do nothing stupid. I ain't gonna hurt you. Yes. And dude is still trying to talk Christopher Walken or Frank White out of it. Frank White is like, look, bro, I'm not going nowhere with you. Fuck that shit. And I forget, I forget what the cop said. The cop said something, and Christopher Walken just was like, "Yeah, whatever." Pop, 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 shoots his ass. You remember what he said doing to get his ass shot? I don't. He said no, but you are something. I don't know. Yeah, he said somebody. You know, you're not gonna make it out of here or something like that. He's like, he's, "No, you aren't." Pop, 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 or yeah, something like that. Something. Basically, basically yeah. the cop, so the old school detective dude now is dead as fuck. So people in this movie are just dying like motherfucking crazy, back to back. Dropping. This cast is going real slim. Right. <laughs> And so, but the next thing you see Frank White walking out, but he got his like he's got his coat pulled over himself. And mm-hmm. PJ thought it was because he had marked that chick. Very slick. But Very you will find slick. out later that that's not what happened. Yeah. So he's walking outside. He's walking in the crowd, like trying to blend in with the people, Assassin's Creed style and shit. Yeah. And you hear sirens in the background, like sirens are like loud. They're giving. There's like a billion of them because there's a lot of cops about to come. <laughs> and eventually he just finds it. There's a big ass traffic jam going on, and there's a billion people in the street. He gets in the back of a cab and just tells dude to just drive. Yes. But, of course, it's a big traffic jam. He can't move. Yes. And so the cops are, like, starting to like make a blockade. Surround yeah, this traffic him. jam. Yes. So jamming the traffic up even further. Mm-hmm. And he pulls, basically, he pulls his gun out to where the taxi driver can see it. Mm-hmm. And the taxi driver's like, yo, fuck, fuck this. That. Yeah. I'm yeah. out. He gets out the car and runs. I think he's telling people, like, yo, there's a guy in the back of my car with a gun. Mm-hmm. So the cops start to swarm around. And it's around this time, he opens up his jacket and you see that he got shot. Yes. Before the cop went down, he actually got a shot off on Frank White and it's like bleeding real, real bad. So basically, he sees all the cops are coming around. He bleeding out. They got mm-hmm. him surrounded. They, like, they got beat cops, undercover cops. Like Everybody. Everybody's out there to get this motherfucker. The whole city. And he's looking around with his gun in his hand. And then you see like the wound is just leaking blood. <laughs> so eventually he just, I think he just says, fuck it. Right. I'm not going back to jail. He just lets himself die because he tilts yes. his head. His head falls over and then it like sits on him for a minute. You see the cops. And then when it cuts back, his hand drops and the, like the gun, yeah. like it goes, his body Loosens. goes limp. Uh-huh. And bam, that's the end of the movie. So I'm literally, he, he let, I say, rather let himself die than go back to jail. Yeah. You know, he was going to go either for death or life. You was not getting back out again. It's all bad. But that's, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. King of New York. Yes. Now, before we get into our rating, I'm going to read these IMB joints real quick because I wanted to read those. Okay. I saw some stuff I wanted to talk about. Let me hear. uh, IMDb facts for King of New York. The woman who played Frank's hostage on the subway we just talked about had never acted before. Christopher Walken prepared her for the scene by telling her, quote, I'm going to do something awful to to you, but I'm not going to hurt you. (laughs) So that's really what he said. Yeah. I guess so. I guess the line in the movie may have been the thing. He, they might have left it in. Wow. Okay. Lawrence Fishburne got the part in the movie just by coming in looking exactly as he does in the film and did not have to audition. Damn. The first cut of the film originally ran for almost two hours and had to be edited down to an hour and 46 minutes to avoid an X rating. Damn. I didn't think it was that bad. The hell yeah. Abel Ferreira, the director, claims Wesley Snipes was living in his car during the production of this film. Damn. So like I said, this was early Wesley, so he wasn't really Damn. that dude yet. That's why he's not even top billed. <laughs> I told you this one throughout the movie, but New York rapper the Notorious B.I.G. used the moniker Frank White in many of his songs. Mm-hmm. I told you that one, yeah. Mm-hmm. What was Denzel's name? Denzel, he wasn't in this movie. In that movie where he was the mob boss? Wasn't it Frank White? Frank, no, Frank Lucas. Frank Lucas. He's an American gangster. Yes. All these Franks. The movie was shot in 40 days without the crew having to spend more than a day on each location. They got this shit done. Good shit, good shit. The work of real-life friends David Crusoe and Wesley Snipes in this film helped them get casted in NYPD Blue, New Jack City, each of which landed each them into stardom. So I guess they was actually hmm. cool. Okay. David Crusoe convinced the director to hire Wesley Snipes. So, yeah. <sighs> you don't say. <laughs> the word fuck is used 90 times in the film. Oh, I didn't know this. This book is included in the 1001 movies you must see before you die. 
So yeah, shit. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's just some of the stuff I wanted to read. I didn't know that. Like I said, man, they, it got bombed back then, but people like this movie. Yeah, man. now, yeah. I'm Looking mad. Back. I wanted it on Blu-ray. I just found out the Blu-ray is in print, and I just ordered it, so I will be yes. having that soon. Yes. So you can take this DVD home with you if you like it. I would do that. But I was mad because there's a thing called there's a spot called Arrow Video, and they release these big special, like how Criterion do, mm-hmm. and they release this on Blu-ray special edition, but it's only in the fucking UK. Damn, they can't ship it over here. But they, the fucking players won't play it unless I get a region free DVD player or Blu ray oh. player. But like, it's on Blu ray here, so I just said, fuck it, it's 10 bucks. I ordered it. Damn. I was like, damn, man, bring that shit over here. Yeah, that's some shit. But PJ. Yes. What you think about King of New York? It was everything and some more. This is like, this is. The more I watch this, the more it's going to be like a demolition man to me. Mm. It's like, it just gets better with time. Like, in other words, it's nice movie. Yeah, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the only thing I did not like. Oh, here we go. Was some of the I understand why they did it, but the slow buildups, like to you know before the actual shooting happened, it was just a little. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little too the much talking to yeah, discussions. Too much talking for you. Yeah, the discussions. The yeah, they got shooting in quick. Like I said before yeah, the did. credits, after the they credits, they did. They did. But besides that, loved it. This oh, will shit. be. This will be a nine. A nine. A nine. Okay. A nine. I was going to say ten, but like you, you know, if I can't fully commit. Yeah. <sighs> I could tell you now, I could fully commit to this shit's a ten plus. Damn. I fucking love this movie. Yeah. One of my okay. favorites. Yeah, okay. Ten plus. Ten plus. Y'all ain't seen it like that dude said in that book. A thousand one movies you must see before you die. You need to fucking watch it. I fucking love this movie. Yes. It doesn't get brought up a lot, like with all the like you know hood movie like you know Menace to Society and shit like that even with like gangster type movies they don't get brought up a whole yeah. lot it needs to it though. should yeah it, it should, should. Like, love this. if you like those type of movies or if this shit's not interesting I implore you to watch it yes it's please a damn do. good movie if you're a Chris Walken fan you can watch it yes <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne fan you can watch it yes Gangster Boy fan you can watch it hood movie yes. fan you can watch it yes. Schooly D fan you can definitely watch oh, it cause he does okay. the whole fucking soundtrack that whole soundtrack number Schooly D song shout out to Schooly that's my yes. dude that's where I got my name from damn King of New York, though. That's the shit, P. I'm glad yes. we watched this. But this yes, ain't even what we're supposed good. to watch. We, I just pulled an audible on this one. Yes. <laughs> I was like, we got to watch King of New York, man. We're supposed to watch what y'all are going to hear next week. Yeah. And Not we can't me. say. That's right. It, it gets, it's going to get real fucking weird soon. I'll say that on the podcast. Yeah. Because <laughs> we got some yeah. shit coming. This is... Enjoy this now, guys. This is the happy, the great, <laughs> the love movies hustle. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we might as well you want to tell them now that what the plan for next month is. I'm going to just go ahead and tell them now. Fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Hood Movie Month is expanding into the next month, too. Yes, it is. should have known that was coming. Right. There's too many movies we want to talk about and not enough weeks. Right. So guess what? The Hood Hustle continues into next month. Next month is going to be fun. I'll just say that. Next month will be fun as fuck. Be very interesting. Yes. There uh-huh. you go. Hey. Okay. Anything on your mind, PJ? Uh... No. I got something I wanted to start doing on the show. I got these cards. Uh huh. I'm going to start using them because, uh, you know, we like to talk about the blackness and the black history. Yes. Right and uh, I got these things as Black History Flash Cards, Volume 1 from UrbanIntellectuals.com. Yes. I'm going to read the back of the box for you. Okay. Urban Intellectuals is proud to present its first volume of Black History Flash Cards. Designed to combat the miseducation and suppression of black achievements around the globe. This 52 card series gives a strong foundation of the many untold stories, events, and unknown figures that have gotten that have given shape, color, and definition to the world of academia, science, civil rights, educational arts, and more. Mm. Enjoy learning about the revolutionary con- contributions of blacks. Take pleasure in sharing all that you learn with friends, educators, and most importantly, our youth. It is imperative that they understand black history, become inspired, and take action to build their own greatness. This is true. So, urban intellectuals. Yes. I am going to read off one of these cards every week. Yes. We're gonna go through all fifty-two. Okay. Y'all gonna learn something. Before on the older episode, Spirit was talking about you know integration and people need to be educated because then maybe they won't be so ignorant. <sighs> I'm racist because I was born that way. I'm racist because I don't know any better. I'm racist because I don't know history. Well, I'm gonna start teaching y'all a little something. There something. you go. And the first card we're going to start with, oh, look, it's Nat Turner. Oh, shit. Start. This is what happens when you keep the black man down. Starting with Nat Turner. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Right. I don't know if these are in the right order or not. I don't know if they're card numbers or not, but these are just the order that they're in as I open the box today. Fuck it. 
So Nat Turner, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Born October 2nd, 1800. Died November 11th, 1831. So he's only 31 years old. So oh, they do have numbers on the top. This is number 40. Damn. So these are all out of order then because the next one. Whatever. Fuck it. We're going to start. This is where we start now. Yes. Nat Turner. So on the front of it, of course, they got the picture of him and all that. On the back has some facts. Mm -hmm. Let's read off some Nat Turner facts. Show. Okay. Nat Turner was an enslaved African American who led a rebellion of slaves and free blacks, nicknamed the Prophet. Mm. He was a Christian preacher that traveled from plantation to plantation, ministering to so called slaves about the Word of God. He said God spoke to him and told him to lead a revolt and to kill his oppressors. He used his preacher network to build his rebellion for freedom. His fight for freedom killed 55 white supremacists, mm. but he ended up being hanged after being judged and sentenced to death. That's how he died, eh? Yep. There's actually a movie that came out not too long about him called Birth of a Nation. Yeah. I have yet to see that. I need to watch you that damn it. movie, man. You need and it. to be clear, it's not The Birth of a Nation. No. That bullshit from the 30s or whatever. It's Birth of a Nation from yes. like two years ago. Yes. Well, that was a fun fact. There's your black history <laughs> flashcard yes. fact from urban intellectuals. I might have to holler at them and see if we get some, some love. Like, yo, we showing y'all some love. All right. Thanks for the flashcard. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't know if I got any stories for you though, PJ. It's, uh, it's been slow. It's been well, dry. I you know we you know to continue on the push your teeth thing and Drake beef. You see what he said that Jay Prince stepped in. Who is this guy? Y'all know who Jay Prince is? No. Jay Prince is the creator and founder of Rap a Lot Records. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that shit with Takashi Six Nine and Jay Prince. Ooh, that was I was like That's I was worried for your boy. Was. I was like he will get fucked up. He oh, fucking with the wrong yeah. dude. Jay Prince, like, there's stories, like, you don't, don't want to fuck around with that dude. Like, uh, he can get shit done. <laughs> he's a Frank White. Yeah, in a way, maybe. Uh, Allegedly, from what I hear, I don't want to say nothing. I ain't coming after us. This. <laughs> like, nigga, who told you that shit? I fucking love rap a lot, yeah. bro. Like, ghetto boys, yeah. that's some gangsta nip. Yo, I'm with wow. you. But, yeah, that's who Jay Prince is. Okay. And he basically said he made an OG call to Drake and was like, yo. He said, he says, like, Drake had a response made for Pusha T. But he told him not to release it. He said, but he said that 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 this would have fucking ended Push's career, basically. He said it would have been like nuclear. So why not drop it? Because That's he the said, point. You know, let me let me let me find quotes for you. I'm gonna okay. Because I thought this because was he rap. He basically said, because that's what he was saying. He said, Jay Prince said, your boy was out of line. He was out of hand with that shit. It was like, took it more than rap. We started talking about family and all that type of shit. Yeah, there might have been a couple bars that, you know, crossed it. But shit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find the exact quote. <sighs> So what? I wonder what Drake. Oh, had there's to some, say. there's something new to this story that just happened a day ago. Too. Oh just, shit! According to Jay Prince, he personally called Drake to ask him not to release what the producer describes as an overwhelming musical response to Pusha T's "The Story of Adidon, I guess one that would have taken aim at Kanye as well. Mm -hmm. "Quote: After speaking with Kanye, I spoke with the brother, and he didn't want this. I saw this was going to a place that I would feel I feel would have ended his career if Drake would have put that song out he had on him." Damn. And definitely would have hurt families, and we're not in this for that. That's not Drake's character to tear a man down to that extent. Okay. I guess. I he guess. He says, the ingredients were overwhelming. I know for a fact that it would have been bad for Kanye and my man. It just wouldn't have been good. It's beyond music at that point. Oh, it's bad for Ye? Bad for Ye, and I guess Pusha T and Ye. Oh, it's going to affect livelihoods. It's going to interfere with people's whole lifestyles from that moment. He would have done something. I just wonder what. So, yeah, that's what he said. He made that call. Like, I guess we'll never know. But whatever it was, I guess would have fucked up Kanye and Pusha T, which wouldn't have bothered me none. Yeah, right. I Man, wanna, that's I just going to leak like two years. Oh, if it ever comes out, you know that's going <sighs> to... But this article, it just says a day ago, it says Jay Prince says he received threatening message over Drake Pusha T beef. Damn. It said, he said, uh, I got a text on my phone from somebody with a threat about saying, staying away from Pusha T. I don't know where it came from, but I see addresses of people I know. Keep his name out your mouth or else... <sighs> Damn. He said he showed the text message to the interviewer and included various addresses recognized by the rap -a -Lot founder. The text came from a number not listed in the context. He said, these are real-life situations we got to deal with. I understand where it can go, and I'm trying to circumvent it. But by the same token, I'm really the wrong person to be trying to go there with. I understand it, and I'm in a position to try and put an end to it. But the devil don't even like peace. Believe it or not, he sees you going through peace, and he don't want it. That means nothing. But this decision, we're standing by it. We're going to move along and just do good business. Mm. So he asked him if this is the first threat he's ever received. He said, this is the first one, but it's definitely on my phone. Of course, people will talk loosely, but a pair of lips will say anything. Your people that surround you are going to come together. Somebody wants stripes. Somebody want to get brownie points. 
when you don't want these kinds of fires to bed when you don't put these kind of fires to bed that fire turns into a blaze or an explosion and there it is that's real life damn oh, and he, oh that's the quote I was looking for he said he repeatedly described Drizzy's lack of a response as not getting into the pig pen with the pigs oh yeah shit <laughs> yeah okay so, so he might have had a response excuse me Drizzy he might have one and apparently like I said it would have been nuclear to push T and Kanye's careers apparently uh, he to... I want to hear it now I'm very that makes you even more curious about it because if it's that bad like, somebody's going to leak that would that shit. be like some no Vaseline level like yeah, yeah. So like no Vaseline if, if Dr. Dre did not come out with that chronic album man as you see, mm. like I said, as much as I love Easy E, he kind of never was at the that high point he was ever at. MC Ren never, he put out, he was never. I was say he just again. dropped off. DJ Yellow started doing porn, like they all just kind of that Damn. group broke up. Like no, actually broke up that whole group. That's some shit. <laughs> or even if, like I said, if you look at the Drake and Meek Mill thing, like yeah that shit just kind of fucked Meek Mill all up and he ended up going to jail and all that shit damn 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 but that's it's funny that's the thing about the south and it's funny because that's a rap a lot connection too but it's like back in the early or mid 2000 when Pimp C got out of jail you know there was all that end fighting with Lil Flip and T.I. and yeah. Paul Wall and I think Millionaire and all, all the best all these, south. Saw, these yeah. southern dudes were all fighting this shit mm-hmm. and Pimp C got out of jail the first thing he did he called the fucking meeting <laughs> And was like, everybody gonna squash this beef right now. It's too much money to be made out here. Right. If y'all keep fighting with each other, the other motherfuckers are gonna take over and y'all ain't gonna be making shit. Right. And now basically, and like it's I said, boss and, and thinking right Pip there. C was on rap a lot. It was solo. So uh, Jay Prince was involved in that too. So it's like, this is just what your boy do. It's like, it's too okay. much money out here to be made to be fighting with each other. Okay. All so right. This is nothing new for him. That's what I said. This is nothing new. So okay. when, he, when he came out and did that, I was like, I'm not surprised by that. Okay. Because he reminded me of now. him and Pimp C bringing everybody together. Well, now that you put context to it, I... Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm here for, man. I take my hat off, I guess. It, it's deserved. I just love that my boy said that I'm trying to squash this, but at the same time, I'm not the dude you want to be fucking with. Because like I told you, with me. this motherfucker has people behind him. That rap a lot records nice. was known for having like some of the most gangster ass fucking legit people on the Damn. microphone and if they you don't want that no problem. nigga i'm really a thug like yeah. i'm rapping but i'm a thug okay if i stop rapping i'll be right back it reminds, me, it reminds me of the stories about mc hammer yeah how he's a fucking thug well he's from yeah. oakland though i mean you would never you could never tell with can't touch this that's the thing well that's the thing he was making all that pop music you know because it was that's what made him money <sighs> Well, that's why he started doing, you know, pumps in the bump, pumps in the bump. Oh Let the girl with the pumps. I, I don't care what nobody say. How, Sway? I fucking love that song. That is my shit. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's the, the video. Is hilarious. There's two videos. One video is fucking hilarious. There's the pumps in the bump video, the original version. I think that I got pulled off TV. Is this your boy in a fucking Speedo gyrating Humping the camera. Humping the fuck out the camera. That nigga dick all in the camera. And they're around like dry humping a bunch of girls. It is it's fucking, fucking comedy gold. It is though. It but is. The other video is way more like normal type video. But that yeah. first video, oh my god, it's it's hilarious. Seek that out. <laughs> Seek that. <laughs> but I like that song. But not um, with MC Hammer though. Red Man did the v- DJ Blast story where he basically was on the record. He said something about MC Hammer or some. MC Hammer came at him at Red Man. At Red Man. Oh shit. Because I think Red Man said like. You know, Hammer's people were like one. He like Hammer won't talk to you, and because like Hammer had dudes that would like go hit you up. Word. And he said he said something. I think he might say something about MC Hammer mama or something like that. And MC Hammer kept to him and said something. And he, Red Man, he put his hands up like, Nah, we good. I ain't got no beef, bro. Like, damn. He said he said Hammer, you not you do not fuck with that dude. He's like yeah, everybody think he all good. He said Hammer will come find you. He will come to your face and confront damn. you. Like what the fuck was that shit you was talking about? Good shit, Hammer. Good shit. I heard the same thing about R. Kelly. Really? Remember that? I'm from Chicago. I think, so. Yeah, again, like I said, another yeah. dude from that type of spot. But I think that was his name, Vince Staples or somebody made a comment about him on some oh. show. And like he started getting calls from R. Kelly's people, like some threatening type shit. Like R. Kelly people was like, Oh, nigga, nigga shut the fuck up. You keep talking. Ah. Let's see what happens till you get touched out here. Damn. All yeah. right, Kells. <laughs> like motherfuckers don't be playing that shit, man. Hmm. So you gotta watch who you be talking about. Yes. Like I told you before, even <laughs> even Fucking Brendan and Nathan got hit up by Uwe Ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Like, we ain't had that happen yet. 
I don't think nobody's got that pissed off at Yeah, shit. right. We don't really be hating too much, though. No. Like, we always like, we like dumb shit. So. Yes. We don't I think the, only, the only person I really like said anything disparaging really about was Kanye because I just don't care yeah. for him. But I ain't never, I ain't never really on no time. I think that's everybody though. I'm talking about even when everybody liked him. I oh. still was like, not. I told you, Kanye almost yeah. got me killed. I'll never forgive him for yes. that. I almost died because of him. Uh, damn, yay. <laughs> Fucking put fall to sleep at the wheel because of that damn graduation album. But oh, that's just crazy, man. But I had a feeling though, like, cause like. I was listening to somebody, I forget who it was that was talking about it. They were even saying, like, that shit just, when you start, like, all that shit puts your teeth in. Like, that's some shit you don't respond to on wax. You respond to, like, with fists. Like, yes. After that, it's like, it's bigger than beef. That's basically right, what Jay man. Prince was saying. Like, fuck that shit. After we some shit like that, now nah, we fighting, bro. Like, yeah. It's over. Damn. <laughs> you gotta get fuck these that hands. talking. Bro. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I respect it. And granted, Drake did say he like mentioned his like fiance's name or wife's name. That was the mm-hmm. thing I think that triggered it. But then your boy went to the fucking extreme. extreme. And like his friend and his there. Said his friend was dying or some shit. Sick, sick, sick. Oh. <laughs> like, and then he used his ad lib. Oh, push it to you. <laughs> but when it comes to disc records, we all know what the best like fucking line from a disc record is. And it's the first line in the song. You know what I'm talking about? No. That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat uh, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Uh, get money. That Tupac hit him up is one of my favorite because that's the opening line before the beat even comes in. It just starts out because he's dissing Biggie, of course, talking about Faith <laughs> Evans. And he's the first line in that song Damn. is, That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Then the beat comes in. Like, What's up? And I think it's like, Take money. Because you know, mm-hmm. you have to get yeah. money. Yeah. I fucking yeah. love that. Just for that alone, like, I fucking love That's one of my favorite like opening lines to any song. It reminds me of your state property Wake quote West Wake up, nigga. We got your bitch. Hey, wake up, nigga. We got you. <laughs> so what's the quote of this movie? Did we have, did we have one? It's not a quote. I want to say, yeah. It's not like, a quote that you use in everyday life. But like I said, the part where he opened up the box. And it's like, for the, yeah. for the bullet holes, poop down. Bah, 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 bah. But that has to have context, though. You got to have the, the tampon scene to go with it. But like, just like straight lines. Out. Like, oh, I, I told you. I, I talked about it earlier, didn't I? Because he said, uh, I've been in jail too long. Yeah. I don't know remorse. My feelings are dead. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> Oh shit! There you go. That's the line That's of this it. movie. Oh fucking! I love King of New York. Y'all need y'all need to watch this movie. Yes, real, please man. watch this shit. It's good. But y'all know what else y'all can do though? What can they do? They can follow us on Twitter. Oh. You can follow me at capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase podcast. podcast. That is H V H podcast for you. And you can follow PJ on Twitter at capital P, lowercase A U L Y, capital P, lowercase J, Pauly P J. There you go. You can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash HVH Podcast. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Instagram at Home Video Hustle Podcast. Just type us in the search bar. I assure you we'll be there. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on YouTube. Type Home Video Hustle in that search bar, and I assure you we'll be there, too. Yes. And you got new videos every Wednesday. Yes. You want to know what's coming up on Friday? Watch the video on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> you can go on the redbubble.com, type in Home Video Hustle or HVH Podcast, and mm-hmm. we got shirts and other merchandise for you. Yes. Get your hustle on. Let your friends know what your favorite podcast is. Yes. And PJ. Yes. Tell them about that Instagram. Instagram. Pauly underscore 614 underscore P-E-E. Pauly 614 P. Yes. And if you want to get a hold of them Black History flashcards we talked about, just go to urbanintellectuals.com. I think they're like 10 bucks. Yes. Good information. Good information. And you'll get them every week from now on. Yes. Matt Turner was just the first. <laughs> And the hood hustle is going to continue, man. Yes, it will. But yeah, come back. <laughs> if y'all hear snoring in the background, it's there's spirits in the house sleeping. Yes. <laughs> the spirits are letting themselves be known even when they're sleeping. She says hi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, I'm going to let you know something real quick. And what is that? Well, first, that you should definitely go watch King of New York. Yes. But I also want to let you know that I'm Brent. And I'm PJ. Have a good rest of your Friday. Have a good yes. rest of whatever fuck day you're listening to this on. Yes. Be nice to each other. Be good. Be decent human beings, man. Yes. Have fun out here. Life's too short to be all fucking pissed off. Yes. And pissy. Hey, look. Hey, look, 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 man. <laughs> I know things may be down for you right now. Mm-hmm. They'll get better. Yes, they will. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on trucking, as Eddie Kendrick mm. would tell you. Back in the day. Yes, keep trucking. Old school references. <laughs> Hope that made you smile. That's what that was for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, real, for, real quick before I go to, um, I didn't tell you about this. Well, I tagged you in the bar. I didn't get a chance to tell you before. There's this thing called Rabbit TV, Rabbit.tv or something. Yeah, you yeah. telling me, yeah. And uh, you can stream movies on there and everybody can like come in there in the group and they can chat and watch it with us. Mm-hmm. I tried it, as of this recording, I tried it yesterday. Mm. And we watched Paid in Full. Mm. 
but I had to do it around midnight because I was at work. Okay. So I'm thinking though, a lot of times, like, because you know, spirits be gone on the weekend because they be at work and shit. Mm-hmm. So if I'm ever here, like, just chilling, I might just start popping a movie in. So okay. if motherfuckers want to come chill, we can just chat and watch movies or something. There you go. That's so, if hot. I, so like, if we do King of New York, I might be like, you know, the day the episode come out, maybe that night, I'll be like, yo, let's watch King of New York. There you something go. Something like that. Okay. So keep on the lookout for stuff like that if y'all want to come chill with us in the little rabbit hole. Hustle is joint. ever changing. And you can even do it on your phone, so P, you can pull it up on your phone and watch that shit at home, too. Okay. Now just make that rabbit TV account, we can be chilling. Damn. So I was watching the fucking NBA game on there. <laughs> yeah, I watched that shit. Man, you said <gasps> Cleveland is down yeah, three. we're about to get swept. Yeah, I think we getting okay. swept, too. I was about to ask you, think we getting swept? Yeah. I okay. think so, too, man. It's okay. Fuck it. Fuck it. LeBron will be gone next season. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... That motherfucker probably about to. Man, what would you? What would happen if LeBron went to the Warriors, and they had that fucking team? Would the NBA just I, be over? Uh, yeah, like you can't <laughs> do that. That's cheating. NBA is just done. Like there is no NBA no more. That. It's just the Warriors now. It's like every game automatically. Because that would be who? Let me see. That'd be Steph Curry, mm-hmm. LeBron, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Who else is on that team? Uh, Clay Thompson on that Clay team. Clay Thompson. That's it. Yes. Man, that's a. Whew. Yeah. That's the real squad. That's the, <laughs> yes. Walk gang, up, gang. Walk up, walk up, walk up, squad. Yes. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Man, that'd be wild. Yeah. I want to see that. Just see. I want to know. I just want to see what happens. Domination. That'd be like the fucking all star team, but like in a regular season. You're right. <laughs> the Monstars. Yes. Yeah, Space Jam reference. <laughs> that's got to come up sometime. Yes, it does. But not this time. Yeah. Not next time, but we got something good for you next time. Yes, we do. So again, I want to tell you, peace. Peace. Niggas get shot every day, bitch. <laughs> Be all right. I don't know this movie, but I don't yeah. care. Do you have trouble getting out of bed? Start your day with Up In 10 Club, the podcast that gets you out of bed in 10 minutes. With me, Jaslyn, your morning toast. Whether you're snugly, depressed, anxious, or just too lazy to get up, you're welcome in the club. It's the motivational podcast that doesn't ask too much. This is your 10 more minutes. Listen where you get podcasts and on YouTube. Be our friend on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram at Up and Ten Club. Please subscribe or tell a friend. Hi guys, we interrupt your favorite podcast to interrupt you with an ad for your new favorite podcast. Wait, wait, isn't this playing on somebody else's show? Exactly. So then, how are we? Inter- I thought we were their new favorite podcast. Well, we're going to become their new favorite podcast after they hear this advertisement for our show. What's our show called, Justine? Superiority <laughs> Complex. Yeah, where can they find us, Patrick? Uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, exactly. You can go to at Soup Complex on Twitter, S-O-U-P Complex, and you can go to Facebook.com slash Soup Complex. But our main page is on Podbean, and you can find us there at www.superioritycomplex.podbean.com. New episodes are out every Thursday. Justine, yes. what do we talk about on the Superiority Complex? Nerdy stuff. Perfect. Don't get all sensual with your voice. Yeah, did you hear that? I heard it. If you want to hear a little more of that, tune in to the Superiority Complex. One more time, Justine, what do we talk about? Nerdy stuff. Nah, wasn't the same. You tried.